That was so cute. And shut up, don't ruin this for me! It's already been ruined! She's 16. No, it has not! It has not been ruined Bless. for me! Let me have it! Can echo. It can be cute and pedophilia. Oh! Oh! You were gonna do that! Ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. All right, AC, are you ready to have the world's most awkward scene? <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. hey, uh, crap, right, Josh, this is where here. we start. <laughs> yeah. Chaos rain. Wait, what about me, Zaz? I said now, Josh, you cut here. Yeah, the video starts now. I am... <laughs> it seems the weather will be... Oh, what the fuck what was the that? that? <laughs> It seems the weather will be like this all day tomorrow after all. Dang. Makes the good weather we had earlier feel like a lie. George Anaki and I were killing time in front of the parlor television. At that point, Jessica returned. Her face was still blank, but it looked like she'd uh, calmed down a little since we last seen her. Is Maria still in front of the portrait? <coughs> nope. Just came back and she's sleeping over there on the sofa. It's getting pretty late for her, after all. Looking at the clock, I saw it was a little past 10 p.m. If we were planning to stay up all night, it was about time to head back to our room. Well, my mom did have a room prepared for us in the mansion. What'll we do? No, I'd, ra I'd rather head back to the guest house. Going by what we saw of our parents, I think it'd be better if we weren't in the mansion. I agree. They're telling us kids to mind their own business and stay out of their way. Let's be good little boys and girls and do that. As we were talking about this, Aunt Rosa came into the parlor. Looking all, all over restlessly, probably trying to find Maria. Aunt Rosa, if you're looking for Maria, she's over there on the sofa. Thank you. My, she's out cold. We must move her to a bed. Uh, if you'd like, I'd carry her over to a bed. Uh, thanks, that would be wonderful. Are you all heading back to the guest house? Or are you going to stay in the room Natsuhi Nesan had prepared here? We were just talking about that. We just decided to head over to the guest house. I see. Then could I ask you to take Maria with you? I'd feel much more reassured if she stays with all of you cousins. Behind those words, she seemed to be concerned, reg concealing some regrets that the adults herself, that the result that the adults herself included, had deeply hurt Maria's feelings. Leave it to us, Aunt Rosa. After all, we, have, we do have an expert at comforting Maria with us. Uh, are you talking about me? I couldn't do it myself. We'll need everyone together. That's right. Battler, weren't you the one who hit it off with Maria when you were messing around earlier? As we said this, Aunt Rosa smiled, looking truly happy. Thank you, everyone. It looks like our meeting will last until very late. So while I'm sorry to burden you like this, I'll be counting on you all to take care of Maria. Hey, Maria. Are you sound asleep? You're going back to the guest house. Maria muttered something indistinct, rolled over, and fell back asleep. She was sleeping deeply. She's really out cold. I'd hate to wake her. <coughs> right, I'll carry her. That was a wax sprite. Maria's body was much lighter than it looked. I lifted her up and put her on George Anaki's back. It was raining hard outside, and Anaki couldn't hold an umbrella and carry Maria at the same time. We thought Rosa would come with us as far as the guest house to help out. However, when she heard Uncle Krauss's voice call out to her, she had no choice but to return. No, that's a problem. I have to go back now. Is everyone returning to the guest house? I left the hall on the, on the way out to the entrance. The door of the servant room opened and Shannon Chan stepped out. Sorry. It 
has grown very dark, so allow me to guide you. That would be great, Shen and Shen. George Kun is going to carry Maria there. Could you hold an umbrella for him? Yes, certainly. Shen and Shen brought umbrellas for each of us and a flashlight to guide the way. As you open the front door, the downpour is quite terrific. We wouldn't have any time, to sp any spare time to take a pleasant walk and enjoy the nighttime rose garden. Anarchy! Is she too heavy? Want me to carry her? That's okay. I can at least carry Maria's shot. I'm truly grateful. Please take care of Maria. Sure, you got it. Gonna guess this is goodnight on Rosa. Then I will see them over there and return here. Yes, please. Aunt Rosa watched us leave. Maria, I'm sorry for everything. Rosa's mumbling voice didn't reach the person in question. Nor any of the kids. It is right beneath the sound of the rain. After cutting through the rainy rose garden, we were out of the guest house. Ah, uh, if only I applied for the position of Maria Carrier. I don't have got a chance to have Shan Shan's huge boobs rubbing all, rubbing all over my arm. Uh, that, 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 that's not why I did it. It's, it's a misunderstanding. <clears throat> uh, I, I thought that if I didn't walk like this, George Summer would get all wet. Come on, quit babbling and go in! After being urged down by Jessica, we folded up our umbrellas and went to the guest house. Has anyone gotten their clothes wet? I can bring some towels if you want. You don't have to worry about us that much. Thanks, Chan Chan. Ah, uh, that's right. We're planning to play cards or something. Would you care to join us for a bit? Huh? With a night shift on today's schedule. I believe we had a special schedule during the family conference. Also, I think a few alterations have been made, so I will go and check. Wait. Let's go, go all the way back to the mansion to find out. Don't force yourself. Oh, that's alright. I can find out from the servant room in the guest house. Please excuse me for a short while. <coughs> Shan Chan gave a quick bow and went like to the guest house server room. The rest of us headed for the cousin's room and decided to put Maria on be uh, oh. to bed for the whole for the time being. Maria was, sleep was sleeping very deeply. There's absolutely no sign of her eyes opening. For now, we'd get some soft drinks out of the room's refrigerator and drink those while playing cards or something. And you're here too, Genji-sama. What has happened with tonight's shift? Kresama has given an order. He's made a, some sizable changes to the shift schedule. <laughs> Indeed. Kurosan now has the night shift at the mansion. Shannon and Cannon have the night shift in the guest house. Kumasawa-san and I have been ordered to sleep in the guest house. Just now, a phone call came, saying that once you arrived, you were also to remain here for the rest of the night. Huh? That certainly is a sizable change. The shifts at the guest house and the mansion have been completely reversed, haven't they? Originally, Shannon and Ken had been assigned to the night shift in the mansion. But the night shift in the guest house, where all the relatives were staying, had been assigned to Gota, who had an abundance of experience entertaining. Kamasashi should have been sleeping at the guest house, while Genji should have been sleeping in the mansion. However, it seemed that Kraus only ordered this that the schedule be modified. So the guest house and the mansion had all been reversed, and Genji was spending the night in the guest house. 
It's probably because of Beatrice on his letter. Why, probably. After such a mysterious letter appeared, it, would on it was only natural that Krausama would suspect one of us. We served directly under the Master, so Krausama tried as best as he could to keep us far away from the family conference. Genji, Shan, and Cannon, all permitted to wear the one the Ashimia family's crest, the One Winged Eagle, as the servants who served directly under Kinzo. Since they were working for the Ashimia family, they had to obey anybody's orders. But their only boss was Kinzo. Since only Kinzo had the right to employ them, even Kraus could not have had them dismissed of, of his own accord. Eh. Because of this, Kraus and the others often viewed the servants as Kinzo's underlings and shunned them. And in fact, Kinzo seldom let anyone other than them, them enter his study. This sudden shift, ch this sh this sudden shift change is probably a clear expression of sense and of the sense of mistrust that they had caused. That had caused. Meh. Considering the time Kinzo had left to live, this would definitely be the last family conference before the problem of the inheritance came up. On top of that, the mysterious letter that claimed to be from Beatrice had dropped in out of the blue. Krauss definitely wanted to keep Kinzo's loyal subjects away from the table in such such a delicate and important discussion. If you would excuse me, I will rest. If anything happens, call me immediately. Our company tonight is special. Yes, certainly. Yes, certainly. <laughs> do we want to redo that? You're fine. Yeah, you're close enough. Okay. You can go ahead if you want to. Fuck it. I mean, like, if Khan wants to. Alright, on one, right. two. Did, did either of you say it? I didn't. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Now we're, now we're all just know. disappointed. Like, oh. you just had to hold hey, for, I'm like. Green. You had to hold no. for like one second no. and then do it. My Discord froze. It was oh, just showing Joshi's uh, light lighting up, and I didn't hear a thing. No, so yeah, I, 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 it's, I'm on push to talk, so like it's gonna light up. All right, do we want to try it one more time? It's no. I mean, like, it's fine. Jesus Christ. Okay. No. I do apologize. That was just my fix key. it in post or whatever. Sorry. Have it have it so it, you got it right in the first try, and this didn't happen. <laughs> all you have to say, like, just I cover it up for the audio. Yeah, I'll isolate from the audio and then have digital say isolated from the game volume and then I'll take one splice them together. Yeah, that's, that's my that's bad con. Thought. I fucked that up. Okay. That was me. Uh, my Discord froze. I'm sorry. Man, Discord is just man. The tech curses just continue, huh? I blame Thanks. chaos. Yeah, it's chaos. chaos. Or it's Beatrice. Mm. Uh, yeah, we have to kill chaos. chaos. You guys are not gonna shut up about the chaos. No, I'm no. fucking it's gonna love be the chaos day. meme. I'll be there, Candace. How uh, soon? Genji nodded back, went back behind the screen, took off his jacket, and slowly began to relax after a day's worth of tension. The ones who just returned now were they the children? Yes. The other relatives are having a conference in the main mansion. It looked like it would drag on for quite some time. Then we've got it easy. It's already this late, and there's this weather. The rest of the relatives will probably spend the rest of the night in their rooms in the mansion. Yes, probably. I'm only saying this because Genji Sum isn't around, but I'm a little happy I was sent to the guest house. I guess. Oh? Why is that? Because you can stay away from Adam and Ava Sama, those bullies? Or do you have another reason? It, it's not as though I have a, another reason. I see. Then let's do our best together on, with our night shift. Hmm. I'm counting on you, Nason. Just now, I was asked to go to the children's room and play with them. Shannon hung her head apologetically, gazing at Cannon's uncertainty. Shannon didn't try to meet her eyes and spoke and spoke curtly as he sighed. He didn't plan on indulging his sister. You can't. You were assigned to the night shift. 
Besides which, it isn't necessary for furniture like us to respond to an invitation to play. You understand that, right? Yes, I do understand. Mm. Chan's shoulders drooped slightly. They already expected that Cannon, a stickler for rules, would say something like that. But she still seemed a little discouraged. Can't flip through a logbook. He spoke without facing Shannon. That means the children will be waiting for you. You'll have to apologize and tell them that you have an, the night shift. And won't be able to stay the night with them. Go and come back. Uh, uh, yes. I'll go apologize and come back. Chan hurriedly stood from her seat before her brother's mood could cha change and flew out of the servant room after giving a quick bow. As he watched her go, Ken took a single deep breath. Genji's voice came from beyond the screen. Cotton. I will be here, so you can go too. Genji-sama. Shannon was the only one called. It's not as though I was invited. That was is only because you were not there at the time. If you had been, you would have been invited as well. It is good to play as a child from time to time. Hmm. No, such things is not necessary for me. Human children may have a need to play, but we are furniture. Is that so? Nissan is also furniture. Even if she pretends to be a person, it will only hurt her later. I understand that, so I try not to get too close to people. That's all. Can't you not say anything after that? After a while, he stood up and used a pot of hot water to make powdered cocoa, serving some to Cannon as well. You don't use water for cocoa! Pot. You do it. You do yeah, it. You do. Cases. You do it. Yeah, you do. Bad cocoa. Like, that's for real? You milk for it. I had no clue! Dumbass, you're too loud! You wake up Maria! Well, Badler was so surprised that he yelled obnoxiously and scattered his cards everywhere. His voice caused Maria to turn over once, but she soon fell back into a deep sleep. Just gave him a jab and he lowered his voice. Still, seriously. Now that you mention it, they really did have that kind of atmosphere, didn't they? Ah, now I see it. So, George Anarchy is... George couldn't be seen anywhere in the room. For a while ago, when Shannon came into the room, George suddenly said that he'd forgotten something in the mansion and needed to go back, go back and get it. Shannon said that she would guide him, but just like she had on the way to the guest house, and the two of them departed together. There's actually signs it's been happening for a while now. You know, questions about hobbies and favorite things. <laughs> I always thought it was a bit much for passing interest. And look what's happened now. Come to think of it, I get this feeling that George Anarchy's always been overly nice to Shannon Chan. Now I get it. <laughs> That's a nice shot. What's up, my Riri? Come here, puppy. Uh, according to the weather report, it looks like it'll be at its worst tonight. It also seems it'll last all day tomorrow, though so it should get a little better. Really? And then, maybe the boat won't arrive until the day after tomorrow. I hope that doesn't interfere with your work on Monday. <laughs> uh, I already knew the typhoon would be coming beforehand. Just in case, I made sure that I didn't have any plans for Monday, so it's okay. I may not look it, but I really am the type who can plan ahead in a schedule. George puffed out his chest, acting proud. Compared to the calm appearance George always had, and as, as the oldest cousin, he acted amusing like a little kid. Jan chuckled at this abrupt contrast. 
It's no surprise you're so well prepared, as someone who will bring prosperity to his company someday. Well, making a company prosper really is a tough job. Money isn't the only thing that's important. I learned that well when studying under my father. Making a money is making a company prosper is like owning a castle and leading your subordinates. My dad really loves reading about great leaders during the warring periods of Japan. A hobby that's probably influenced by the fact that he shares Toyotomi Hideyoshi's name. Much of his philosophy on managing businesses comes from talking about them. Did you know? Ta uh, Takeda Shingen. Wait, did I say that right? Takeda Shingen, yeah. Yeah. Takeda. Was, uh, Takeda Shingen, who was feared as the leader of the strongest cavalry corps in the warring periods, started out with his troops in complete disarray and didn't have the kind of strong leadership necessary to utilize them well. Is that true? That's a little unexpected. In order to unite his troops, Shingen showed his excellent leadership in many ways. For example, when a soldier succeeded well in battle, he would immediately honor them with a medal. Normally, this kind of thing was put off until after the war, and they were all awarded at once. He continued this diligently while in the field of battle, and immediately showing his appreciation for his troops' military exploits motivated them in an extremely significant fashion. Also, whenever one of the one of his troops is brought down by an illness, he would be the first to rush them up, rush up to them and care for them, and so on. Takeda Shingen wasn't just the man who led the strongest cavalry corps in the warring period. He was the person who cared for the most uh, he was the person who cared the most for his troops throughout the warring period. And because he was the kind of person, all of his troops went alongside that's, that's, him. That's my line. Oh, oh wait, my bad. And because he was that kind of person, all of his troops went along with him. The truth was, Shannon heard this story several years ago. But whenever discussion of his father led to this, this sort of topic, George would always glow and look like he was having a great time. So Shannon just smiled without interrupting, and urging him to continue. Of course, in a capitalist world, money determines both your strength and the height of your fortifications. But you can't build up a castle or succeed in war by yourself. Such things can only be accomplished with the support of many subordinates, by borrowing their strengths. After understanding this, when I look at my father's back, I realize how immature I am. I can clearly see how much competition he had to overcome before building up all he has now. Sorry, I was writing notes. Okay. George Sama, you truly look up to your father. I'm jealous. <coughs> ah, uh, sorry. Uh, th that's uh, not how I meant it. I'm sorry. That's not how I meant it either. Do them awkwardly looked at their feet. Shannon had no parents. He had been brought up in an orphanage owned by Kinza, called the Fukui Gospel House. Under the guidance of Kinza, the honorary director of the, or the orphanage offered members who excel in a chance for on-the-job service experience. If their efforts met with Kinza's approval, they were able to leave the orphanage and work as servants for the Ashermia family. This is considered to be the, height, the highest honor for those who lived in the orphanage. Servants from the Fukuin house all took names of the character On and them when they, when, while they served. So Shannon wasn't her real name. Same went for Candid. All members of the Fukuin house were orphans. At least they were all people who had been separated from their parents under special circumstances. Because of this, the orphans had been taught to think, for each, think of each other as their only family. That seemed so natural for both of them when Cannon called Shannon his sister. Now both Cannon and Shannon were working in the mansion today. There are several other servants possessing the On character in their names, such as Manon and Lenon, who often worked in rotation schedule. 
However, there were not many servants who stayed with the Ashurmia family for long. There's nothing for them to quit after three years. You'd probably say that Shannon, who had been working for ten years, was a notable, notable exception to the rule. Looking at the servant for the Ashurmia family was a heavy burden to bear, but the pay wasn't bad at all. Working for a full three years would earn more money than what was needed to enter a mainstream society. That was why, even when the orphan, even though the orphan and orphans realized what a harsh task working for the Ashurmia family was, they still hoped to be accepted. Maybe the fact that Shannon managed to continue to work in for ten years wasn't because she had more willpower than the other servants. Maybe she got stuck working for ten years because she didn't have the, or the courage to say that she wanted to quit. Kinzo couldn't even trust his own blood relatives, and those excellent servants sent from the Fukuin house were the only ones he could rely on. Because of that, Kinzo would, would sometimes allow them to wear the family crest, the servants under his direct control, and have them work close to him. Uh, um, you've been working here for uh, almost ten years now, right? I must have saved up a lot of money by now. I wonder... It's not like there's anything in particular I'd like to buy. After all, a few million yen isn't enough to live off for the rest of your life. So, the reason you've been working all this time wasn't to hit some target some? Yes, that's right. I have nowhere to go outside this mansion. And I have been getting along with me well with my lady and the other young servants. The madam does scold me sometimes. But caring for the roses and cleaning the mansion is fun. Uh, that can't be your entire life, Shannon-chan. No. Sayo-chan. Sayo. Sayo. Uh, um... Sayo. Shannon cast her eyes down when, he, when she heard her real name. Just that what George was saying, and she felt silent. There's something I've learned. As I continue to study, even after becoming an adult, and a full-fledged member of society, a human's life is not as mo uh, monotonous or short as we thought it, as we thought when we were kids. All school-age kids have a certain fears they couldn't shake. Word. They wonder what they whether they live the rest of their lives like sleepy classes after a monotonous and boring school day, spending the time in a carefree laziness without anything interesting happening until it's all over. However, life's only like that for underage students. Compared to, the, compared to a human's life, the time they spend as students is nothing more than a, than a blink of an eye. A period where they break through their shells of their immaturity. Oh, fuck. Eh. So the shell might, have, might, be, may, might be a hot, suffocating, and boring world. The world beyond that shell is vast and filled, filled with limitless possibilities. So far, your life, has, uh, your life has been trapped inside the shell called Shannon. I think you're under the mistaken impression that your life will continue like this forever. Uh, uh, Shaden can deny those words. Will the harbor harbor any clear doubts about her lifestyle? Since she's never had any hopes or goals for changing herself, she'd lazily continue to live it living the way that she always had. And if asked whether this life was satisfying, she wouldn't have been wouldn't have been able to, to nod. Eh. She had been intentionally averting her eyes from the truth. Without George's admonishments, she would have continued pretending not to notice her real life slipped away bit by bit, neglected. George Sama. Is it wrong for me to continue living this way? Yeah, it is. Oh, by the way. Didn't you break one of your one of our rules just now? George immediately gave a strict answer, then broke out into a mischievous smile. Shannon already knew what she was being chided for, and she hung her head hung her head again, apparently embarrassed. Didn't you promise not to use Sama when the two of us are alone? I I couldn't obey that as a promise. But, if it was an order, I would have to obey it. 
Because I'm furniture. Then it's an order. Uh, yes. Certainly, George's son. Shan hung her head, her face red. She said George's name again, this time using San. Yeah, that's fine, Seo Chan. George smiled at Shannon. No. Seo, to praise her a small act of bravery. That was cute. The short exchange It's alone really cute. Made it clear how far back their relationship must have stretched. For a long while, the two of them talked as if the weather raging about them didn't even enter their thoughts. Talked about how many memories they built during their relationship that no one else knew about. Every once in a while, a flash of lightning would attempt to interrupt them. They could still they could sully neither their ro the roses nor the time they spent blushing at each other. Uh, th th that's right. Uh, I have something that I uh, wanted to show you. What could it be? George, who had been speaking eloquently, suddenly started to stutter. Watching him, Sa Sa Shannon seemed to guess something. George timidly searched through his pocket. Something got caught in the depths of his pocket, just like the stuttering George. And just like the stuttering George, it took a little while to get it out. Eh. Eh. It was a very small box. A small box covered in a deep blue velvet. That peculiar shape was enough to tell anyone what was resting inside. Shannon prepared her heart somewhat, certain before that this was what, she, what he'd been planning. But even so, when she actually saw it, she couldn't avoid blushing once more. She opened the small box, took something out, and held it out for Shannon to take. I want you to take this. I, I um, couldn't accept something so valuable. You can't take it? That's, that's not... Um, I'm unworthy of such a thing. Sale. This isn't a request. It's an order. Okay, that's kinda of fucked up. Take this ring. Okay? Yeah, that that's right. Well done. Shannon, not wanting to show her bright red face, timidly stepped to this timidly stepped to this ring from George's hand while still staring at the ground. There wasn't a simple accessory. It was a noble object, meant since meant since ancient times to be offered to a special woman under a certain circumstance. Therefore, while George could order her to take it, he cannot order anything beyond that. Anything beyond that would that would depend not on, on an order, but on Shannon, no, Seo's own will. So, from here on out, I'm not ordering you anymore, Seo. I want you. I want you to give me your answer by tomorrow, without using words. Do you understand? How should I? I won't order you any further, so this isn't an order. But a ring is something you put on your finger after all. If you like it, you can just put the ring on any finger you choose. Chen had only pretended not to know. She understood what, she, what he wanted her to do. But she was standing at a huge crossroads of her life. Oh, look how late it's gone. Let's call it a day. George turned away from Shannon, I'm yawning. <sighs> George turned away from Shannon, acting just a bit bluntly. Bluntly. 
I could probably order you to wear it on your left hand. You might be timid and independent enough to actually obey that kind of order. But I want at least th this last step to be done by your own will, Sayo. Understand? Yeah. Yes. So, that's my order. I want you to think about it well tonight and show me your answer tomorrow. Shannon nodded back. Today was the culmination of their many days spent together. The moment certainly hadn't come as a surprise to Shannon. Well, we should get- we should be getting back to the guest house soon. If we take any longer, we'll make everyone worry about us. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I... Um... I just remembered something I had to do with the mansion, so... Uh, I have to go back to the mansion. Uh, something this way? Really? There's something very malicious about that pose after saying <laughs> that. <laughs> I <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> It reminds me it's so glass, much. It's long over eyes I don't know why, but it reminds me of like it reminds me of a certain character from Persona Four that like it gives me a certain energy that I just can't describe. <laughs> have, have you ever known what happens when someone has their heart when Guardian Leviosa? Oh God, I can see his uh, like his eyes beneath his glasses and his right eye, like uh, on our right. Uh, no, wait, on his right, it looks weirdly out of place. Oh, jeez. George stared into Shannon's face as he laughed mischievously. <laughs> he definitely saw through Shannon's lie. <laughs> However, when he saw how she felt, he could sort of understand that she might be embarrassed as to, that she didn't want to, be, want to be alone. So, because George realized that, mean, that meaning behind Shannon's lie, he accepted it. That was so cute. And shut up, don't ruin this for me! It's already been ruined! She's 16. No, it has not! Over. It has not been ruined Bless. for me! Let me yeah, have it! Echo. It can be cute and pedophilia. Oh! oh, oh God, you were oh, gonna do that! No. Yeah, oh, to be that's she's horrible! Oh. Shannon entered the entrance hall to the mansion with a tottering gait. We didn't see a time for that. Yeah. A, mi a mixture of exaltation and an uncertainty gave her a feeling that she couldn't easily describe. It swelled up in her chest until it felt like she was about to burst. After stopping for a second in front of the servant room to take a deep breath and calm her heart, she opened the door. The door. Inside, Gouda, who had been ordering to take a take order to take the midnight shift at the mansion tonight, was absorbed in a worn-out crossword puzzle magazine. He looked for up, up for an instant to see if one of the family had come, but when he realized it was a fellow servant, he returned to his puzzles if nothing had happened. One moment, I'm just finishing up a note here. Oh, okay. I thought she was reeling from what I said for a second. <laughs> no, I'm I was. Down notes. I'm still taking notes as we talk and everything. Look, either you, ha you, either one of you had to have it, or neither of you had to have it. Um, Genji Sama told me to come and help you. Ah, is that so? Who would her relief? <clears throat> I thought to go check that mansion was fully locked up. I felt uneasy about leaving this room unmanned. After all, Kraus on the others meant me it looks as though we will continue for quite some time. They might request some tea at any moment. That's true. Then... What shall we do? Shall I watch over? In that case, forgive me, Shannon, son, but I ask you to protect the patrol of the mansion. I will stay here waiting the family's orders. Or once ever you finish that terrible crossword puzzle from 1982. I fucking love crossword puzzles. Is that why you have seven down and three across written on your back? Well, how did you know about that? And only certain people supposed to know about that. Mm -hmm. 
Y- yes. Shannon was slightly disgusted, disgusted in the oh, weird God, tattoo on his back. Own chuckle. Do I always sound creepy when I do that? Wait, what? Stop I mean, well, I don't think I, I don't think a, your chuckle could even get to the level of like my chuckle I somehow pulled off during the sky stream. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> even, <laughs> she, even though she'd come here to ha- <laughs> come here to help out as a favor, she was casually being forced into doing the job of a person actually on duty. Furthermore, after one sadly f- uh, forcing the task on her, Goda returned to his magazine once again and became immersed in his crossword puzzle. In his crossword puzzle, Shannon bowed her head as a token, as a token sign of respect for her elder, and left the room to patrol the mansion. Thanks to her being a bit ticked off, Francis suppress uh, the f- that floaty feeling she'd be- that she'd been having until just now. And anyway, she couldn't let Genji or Ken see her looking like this. A little time to herself until her heart calmed down, so maybe going on patrol wouldn't be so bad. We need to hear the tumultuous voices of the family discussing discussion coming from the dining hall. I was speaking at a great length, only to be interrupted by somebody else. The second person else began to speak in a very long, drawn-out fashion until yet another person interrupted. That kept on repeating, as though the displeasure was seeping out of their voices. She had been told to go to the guest house, so it would be bad if Krauss discovered her. Thinking this, Shannon dashed past the dining hall. Then she went along a prearranged route through the dark mansion, checking all the locks that were secure. Checking that all the locks were secure. Fuck. Eh. Walked in the hall, checking each window. There are no humans on Rakenjima other than those connected with to the family, so locking up didn't really serve much of a purpose. None have been in the habit of locking up, locking up with the Ashimia head family. At least not until Nazi had scolded them off for being careless. The metal fixtures on the window were ice cold, as she had checked them one by one. The glow in her heart seemed to cool down. Hmm? Oh shit! A butterfly? A golden butterfly. That was one magical looking butterfly! At the time... Well, she, she thought that she saw something twinkling across the hall. Twinkling. How could anything be twinkling through the darkness of the hall? She figured she must have been imagining it, but she still held her breath. Grasping a curtain, she fearfully gazed down the hall. However, other than the occasional crack of thunder brightening the hallway, the glimpse any, any flicker again. It must have been her imagination after all. Maybe her heart was so agitated that she'd seen something that didn't even exist. Shannon went back to checking the windows. However, a certain unnerving memory was resurrected in the back of her mind. It was that ghost story. It had been passed down among the servants who served the Ashermia Head family. The mansion had two different masters. One of the day and one of the night. Beatrice, the master of the night, would sometimes fly around the mansion in the form of of sparkling butterflies. That was the story. Come to think of it, didn't Canon Kuhn once say that he had seen it with his own eyes? Oh, he got sulky when I when I oh, this is this is Shannon talking. No, no. Oh, he got sulky when I said he must have imagined it and refused to believe him. Could it possibly be true? The roar of the thunder gave no answer. I love the sound of white noise. Oh yeah, I fucking love rain. It just feels nice to go ahead and sleep whenever there's rain coming down, you know? Uh, I love I love the humid feeling and the smell. Yeah, me too. I just love the sound. Mm-hmm. I love the game.
Oh, oh, Riri. Come here. Whoa. Oh, that that was that felt tense. It was the Six next day. Now? Yeah, it jumped uh, quite a bit of hours. The, the second day. Getting real Majora's Mask vibes. October fifth, nineteen eighty four, nineteen eighty six. Genji tightened his bow tie and looked outside through the cr through a crack in the curtains. Maybe the rain had died down but a tiny bit since the previous night. Thick rain clouds didn't seem like they were letting any trace of the morning sun get by. The morning was dim and far from refreshing. It seems it will last all day after all. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Genji-sama. Kenneth finished checking his appearance and exited the washroom. The normal schedule is rare for anyone to, to, to suffer uh, going straight from a midnight shift to an early morning shift. There are a special schedule for the two days of the family conference. However, unlike the typhoon, unless the typhoon passed today, the relative stay on the island wouldn't la would last until tomorrow. Ken thought it, thought it best to be prepared for the special schedule to last an extra day. The two of them must left the guest house opening their umbrellas. The Rose Garden had been devastated by the wind and rain on the previous night. Even though they'd spent several days making it, be making it beautiful to welcome a guest, one stormy night was enough to ruin it. Cannon sighed. Huh. The two headed for the mansion. Supposed to meet up with Goda and prepare breakfast. Was such a perfectionist that he had probably already woken up and was probably already preparing a breakfast as exquisite and elegant as glasswork. Reached the overhang by the entrance to the mansion and folded up their umbrellas. Genji took a bundle of several keys from his pocket and unlocked the front door. The Ashurian family mansion was the only thing on Rokenjima, so in the past they had been, been in the habit of locking up. However, Natsuhi had opened the, uh, ordered the mansion to be locked up from midnight to early morning. Ever since then, locking the door in the early morning event had become part of the servant's morning shifts. This task had been given to Genji and Cannon so that Goda could start preparing breakfast as soon as he woke up. Silence had fallen onto the mansion, giving the impression that the mansion itself was still asleep. Welcome. Let us begin with the morning chores. Yes, sir. He was split up and, be and began op opening the curtains to the mansion. If the curtain stayed closed, the mansion would remain env en enveloped in a faint darkness. Enveloped, meh. In faint darkness, as, soon as, as though it was still trapped in the previous night. Following a rail rehearsed procedure, Cannon went around the mansion, opening the curtains for one, from, for one window after another without having to retrace his steps once. Even with the horrible weather, drawing the curtains made it feel just a, bit, a little bit like morning. While doing that, he passed in front of the kitchen. Even though he hadn't smelled anything yet, his stomach started a aching for some of Goda's prized cooking. Good morning. Hmm? He tried to greet Goda, who should have been getting breakfast ready, but Goda was nowhere to be seen. The kitchen was darkly lit, and not one of, uh, not only were the curtains not open, the fan wasn't even running. It was still cold. Without any trace of a fire being lit, so of course there was no signs of breakfast b being made either. Though it would have been ex inexcusable, perhaps Gota had overslept. Even servants are only human. They sometimes sleep in and show up late. In the rare case that mm -hmm. such, such a thing happens, part of the servant's code to hide that unsightly scene before anyone notices. 
smoothly cover it up and make sure that the family never even realized anything had gone wrong. And the receiver of the phone that had been fitted to the wall and dialed the number for the extension line in the servant's sleeping room. Huh? You couldn't hear the characteristic sound of a dial tone. Cannon tried picking up the receiver again, but even so, he couldn't hear the usual dial tone. He tried dialing again, but it did not. It did not. It had no apparent effect. Nah. But the lightning last night have damaged the machine, breaking the extension line. The equipment in the mansion was all worn out. Uh, Cannon fully understood now that even the smallest thing uh, uh, that could have caused it to break down. He was trying to wake Goda with the phone and dashed over to the servant's sleeping room. How long had it been since I stopped? Oh, nope. This is this is not Sahi, actually, I believe. Second, I'm finishing up a note here. Okay. <clears throat> How long has it been since I stopped sleeping and started lazily staring up at the ceiling? That vague sense of awakening was part of Natsuhi's usual morning experience. She always slept lightly, and she couldn't sleep at all without medication. Natsuhi's sleep was definitely not a happy thing. When she looked outside, she thought it was still pouring. She hadn't sensed the tiny amount of light, she might have mistakenly thought that it was still the previous night. She herself was one of those one of the hosts. But she mustn't wake up later than, than her guests. Urging herself on, she raised up her body, which still hadn't completely recovered from yesterday's weariness. No one would torment her as long as she remained inside the, this room. And her headache wouldn't get any worse here. This room was the only place she could find peace. So when she left, it meant returning to the world where her husband's siblings kept trying to stab each other in the back. In that case, wouldn't it be better just to stay locked up in this room forever? That ridiculous notion brought a bitter smile to Natsuhi's face. She was starting to sound like Kinzo. Though she often complained about Kinzo staying locked up in his own room and refusing to attend, every attend to everyone else, the truth was that she longed to do the same. Natsuhi gave her head a small shake, and her fantasy was replaced by the reawakening of her usual headache. When she reached for the doorknob, trying to leave the room, her, her hand touched the scorpion charm that had hung from it before going to sleep the previous night. It was Maria's charm, which Natsuhi had, rece which Natsuhi had received from Jessica. Hmm. Didn't Jessica say something about having the power to repel magic? Telling her to hang it from her doorknob. Maybe it was thanks to the charm that, that at least the room had been, pro had been protected from the malice of her husband's siblings. As she thought this, her mood began to get a little more cheerful. Sorry, I'm good. I wonder if I have Jessica to thank for the little bit of peaceful sleep I managed to receive. Then Natsuhi remembered. That's right. That's you. That's right. Well, last night I promised Jessica that I'd give her a charm of my own in exchange for this one, didn't I? Natsuhi opened a drawer on the dresser and took out an antique accessory case that she had treasured when she was a child. Inside, there were many small objects that Natsuhi had thought were valuable at the time. From midst, though, she pulled out a red pouch. It was a small, round mirror about 10 centimeters across. It looked quite old, but the design on the back of the mirrors was very ornate, and it felt like something with historical value. The very least seemed much more authentic than the other charm, which looked like a plastic scorpion keychain. She had heard that this was a spiritual mirror for warding off evil spirits, she had been given it spe especially by her grandmother when her grandfather's mementos had been distributed. It had been, be it had been believed since long ago that a strange power resided in this mirror. Perhaps people thought it could ref reflect calamity, and malice in the same way it reflected light. Not so he returned to the, the mirror to it to its pouch. That'll be a fitting object to hand over to Jessica. As she was placing it in her pocket, the sound of someone knocking on the door suddenly echoed throughout the room. 
Yes. Good morning, madam. It is Genji. My apologies for waking you so early. I'm coming now. What is it? No servants ever come here to her this early in the morning. Nor did they come to wake her in person. Perhaps something bad had happened. Maybe some fatal oversight had been made while preparing breakfast. Something that would shame the household in front of the guests. Natsuhi took a deep breath in anticipation for whatever trouble she was about to hear of. When she opened the door, Genji once again gave a morning greeting while bowing deeply. Natsuhi tentatively responded. Good morning. Did something happen? My apologies. It would seem that, that the telephone has broken down due to the lightning storm last night. The extension telephone isn't working either. So please forgive my coming to see you directly. The extension telephone isn't working? That will be troublesome. Will it be possible to fix it? I'm afraid we do don't know where the lo location... Little, little. Yeah. I am afraid we don't know where the location of the damage. Later on, I would like to call an expert in and have him repair it. Does that mean we'll be unable to have it repaired until after the typhoon passes? Then it will remain broken down for the duration of our guest's stay. Will that hamper our efforts for our guests? Care for. We'll do all we can to ensure there is no problem. Very well. I'm counting on you to make sure we have no blunders. Not so he let out a small sigh of relief. <sighs> She had been prepared for the worst. The damage to the telephone wasn't the, wasn't the kind of trouble she was worried about. But again, even this would probably be enough to spark sarcasm from Ava. Not so he gave her head a little a light shake. Are the preparations for breakfast proceeding well? As to that, we haven't been able to find Goda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the arrangements for breakfast have been has yet to be carried out. What did you say? Natsuhi was indignant. Sure, this was a much bigger problem than the phone's not working. And despite that, this piece of information was the part that had been postponed. Why did everything go well most of the time, and then come to something like this when the relatives were visiting? Natsuhi really put her head to her forehead and shook her head. SMH my it head. It really do be like that, though. Well, I suppose he slept in... At any rate, just see to it that someone hurries up and prepares breakfast. I don't care who. What? Not so he exited into the hall and turned around for a second to close the door to her room. The creepy thing she saw there silenced her completely. It was an unpleasant sight. Someone had dipped her their fingers in a reddish black liquid and scratched the door around the doorknob. It was probably some sort of awful prank. Arranged by someone who'd wanted to make it look as though they tried to force the door with bloody hands. What? What is this sort of... What sort of prank is this? How awful. I also just noticed it as well. I came to call you. I will clean it later. <sighs> Perhaps this is a vulgar joke by one of the guests. Disgusting. Truly disgusting. Who in the world would pull such a childish and disgusting prank? Not so he had a pretty good idea, but of course there was no proof. Hold on a second. Uh... But of course there's no proof, so even if she pushed the issue, it would seem just as though she was making a fuss about nothing. 
In fact, it would truly be better to, it'd be better to act as though she hadn't even realized that such a prank had been played on her. Natsuhi gave the order to have it cleaned and headed off to the parlor with a squeak of her heels. When Natsuhi and, J and Genji arrived in the parlor, Ava and Hideyoshi were already there. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Natsuhi-san! Ergara-san would be making us breakfast, too. My stomach's been getting all excited since I woke up. <laughs> After all, it seems food is all you can look forward to with the head family household. <laughs> I'm pleased to see that you two are in high spirits so early in the morning, Eva-san. With a weird expression, Natsi returned to Eva's gaze, which was fiercely competitive despite the early hour. Then Cannon jogged in. After bowing an apology to the relatives running inside the mansion, there was Genji and told him something in a small voice. Cannon. Have you still not found Goda? My apologies, madam. I went all over the inside of the mansion in the guest house, but I st still haven't found him. Where in the world has he gone? At any rate, breakfast is a higher priority than finding Goda right now. See to it immediately. Yes. Cannon glanced at Genji. He had something else to report, but was uncertain whether or not the words should come from him. Genji nodded and decided to give the report himself. Madam, it is not only Goda. Your husband is also nowhere to be found. My husband. Yes. Even before visiting you, I went to his room to tell him breakfast wasn't being prepared, but I did not find him there. Furthermore, he is not the only one missing. Rudolf Sama and his wife and Rosa Sama are nowhere to be found. Not in the guest house? Nor the mansion? Yes. They were not in their rooms in the guest house either. I'm sure that Goda alone was missing, she assumed that he had slept in and was loafing around somewhere. Uh, the... However, now that she had learned that several of the relatives were also nowhere to be seen, we're going to take a slightly more optimistic view. Could last night's family conference have continued all night up until the present moment? So they might have want wanted to cool their heads off after being shut in a stuffy room. Going after walks of their own through the rain. The thought about cooling their heads really sounded like something Krauss would say. Could have probably been summoned to accompany them and aid them in some way. But Goda was not a man who lost track of time. He had to understand that preparation for breakfast would be hindered if he did not return. However, maybe the family conference had continued until the, this very moment, with an atmosphere that would make it hard for anyone to slip out. Yes. That theory would be quite convincing to Natsuhi. From the illusion that uh, she had felt that morning, as the previous night never ended. And she learned that this feeling wasn't just an illusion, she once again took a deep, weary breath. After all this, that banquet of filthy vultures circling Kinzo's property was still going on. Perhaps they are still discussing the inheritance somewhere in the garden, or maybe the beach. At any rate, if we don't call Goda back, we'll never be able to begin preparations for breakfast. Hard 
So what are you saying? <clears throat> are Nissan and the rest still continuing their discussion? She had planned to stay in, say in a small voice, but Hideyoshi overheard Natsuhi and managed to grasp the situation. Nissan and Rudolph are sure tough. <laughs> Maybe it's just youth in Rose's case. Just a bit after midnight, the two of us were so tired that we headed back to bed. Though I do remember that Nissan and the rest were still having a heated discussion at that point. Men certainly are unpleasant when they get all fired up. Not so he snorted, her face still blank. Cannon, lurch outside. If you find Gota, tell him to return immediately and begin preparing breakfast. Certainly. Natsuhi Nesan, we don't know for sure that they're outside, do we? Couldn't they also be inside a father's study? I say, that's certainly a possibility. I don't know what path, what path their conversation took. But there's certainly a chance they moved to Father's study and let him in on the discussion. I can't imagine that Father would willingly let them bring such a detestable topic into his study. You really think so? <laughs> Well, then, there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, Genji-san and Kanon-kun, but could you search outside? It wouldn't be that strange for Nissan to suggest that they go outside for a walk to cool their heads. Even in this god-awful downpour. Even in this weather. Holy shit. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I didn't think that was actually going to be like the wine. <laughs> this, this writes itself. No joke. I'll go to Father's study. Who knows, they might actually be there after all. Ava-san, I couldn't ask a guest like you to exert herself, so... I will go. I can also wish him a good morning while I'm at it. Oh, then I'll leave it in your hands. <laughs> Though I somehow doubt he'll return your greeting. Nasihimisa, have you always been on such good terms with Father? I don't know whether you could call it that. But I am sure I have gained his trust as the wife of the successor to the Yoshiromiya family. Then I'm sure he'll at least answer you, right? I'd like to at least have breakfast with Father. Do you think you could convince him to come down and join us? It seems that he thoroughly despises the rest of us, but I'm sure he'll listen to you if he trusts you that much. After speaking so boldly, if you're unable to convince Father and come down alone... then I doubt you'll ever be able to claim that you've earned his trust again. <laughs> You're right, it practically writes itself. I am not confident, but I will try. Not so he responded looking discouraged. However, knowing Kinzo's temperament, she had absolutely no confidence in her ability to bring him out. Ava was clearly mocking her, confident that Natsuhi wouldn't be able to get Kinzo to come down. But even so, Natsuhi would lose face if she gave up, saying it was impossible in letting Ava go instead. Ava's mean-spirited and unreasonable demand made Natsuhi clench her fists slightly. When, Ava realized, when Genji realized that he softly spoke to her over her shoulder, Bottom. Please take this, if you would. And this is? 
Genji handed Natsuki a sparkling gold key of ornate design. It was the key to Kinzo's study. The study had an auto lock and couldn't be unlocked as long as, as, long as Kinzo forbade entrance. However, since Genji was especially trusted by Kinzo, he was allowed to carry a key to that door. Uh. One second. Mm hmm. Sorry, I was writing a note. That's fine. But if this key is used, won't you also receive the blame? When the master is sleeping deeply, simply knocking on the door will not suffice. And it would be more difficult to persuade the master to leave his room if you must talk through the door. Please. Use this. Genji. Until now, Natsu had thought of Genji as a cold servant, who wouldn't do anything for her since he worked directly under Kinzo. Or she would have to alter her understanding of him. She wanted to communicate her gratitude, but by then, Genji had already turned her, his back on her and was walking down the corridor with Cannon. As Natsuhi watched them go, the words directed at her, followed from, from behind, were sneering. Well, then, you must bring father with you, okay? After all, it's his son's precious wife who's asking. I'm sure he'll listen to you. <laughs> we're guests, so we'll just relax here at our leisure. What an Ama! You're taking us too far! Sorry, not to waste me, son, but we're counting on you to deal with father. Without answering, Natsu he forcefully spun around on her heels and quickly left that place. God, I love that bitch! <laughs> <laughs> After all that excitement in the previous night, there was no way anyone was going to wake up early. George Anakin, Jessica, and I were snowing loudly on the beds in the cousin's room. Maria, who had gone straight to bed without joining in, was completely awake. I shrugged her sleepy eyes and looked around, to know with this loud and sudden snoring of the other three cousins. For, more, for a while, Maria had to think about what had happened. After that, she realized that her mother wasn't with her, which quickly got lonely. Maria left the cousin's room, trying to head out to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. Taking her to the three who were sleep sleeping soundly, she slammed the door shut. In response, Battler mumbled and rolled over in his sleep. It was enough to make to wake him up. After a while, Maria returned, once again opening the door with a lively bang. When she left the room, her face had been sleepy, and now that she was back, she looked irritated. After that, she climbed up on Battler's bed, which happened to be the closest, and started yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> Dang it, sorry, my mic isn't picking everything up for me. <laughs> okay. What, 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 what? Is this an enemy raid? Surround them! Making sure I was awake, Maria moved over to Georgiana Key's bed and started jumping on that, too. That man and the three of us were, were all greeted with an extremely pleasant awakening. Ah, thanks for waking, up, waking us up, Maria Chat. Ah, you stopped us from sleeping in after that late night. If only you could have been a bit more gentle about it. George Nissan, you really are an adult. I respect that. I secretly hate it. You should be ashamed of yourself, but still love it. It'll be 7 o'clock soon. Well, it's not really a bad time to wake up. <sighs> oh! Almost an hour. 
here. Aunt Rosa? She wasn't in her room? I wonder if she's already woken up and gone to the mansion. Mary kept growing ooh ooh and looking unhappy. I think it would seem lonely because her mother wasn't around. When well, she was irritated and thrown off balance because her mother wasn't where she expected. She told her where her mother was, that alone would probably calm her down. But unfortunately we had no way of knowing where Aunt Rosa was. Except that she wasn't here. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take a drink. Anyway, it's time for breakfast, so let's head over to the mansion. That's right. Maria, let's go to the mansion together, okay? I'm sure Aunt Rosa will be there, too. Oh? Mama's in the mansion? Then I'll go there. Oh. Yeah, I guess we, we should go to the mansion. My parents have probably already gone there. Maria regained her usual composure so completely, her earlier tantrum now seemed like a lie. She got dressed, left the room, and headed for the mansion. Once more, there was a knocking sound on the study door. There was no answer. Betting a fiver that there's actually going to be a body. He seems to be sleeping still, and I could not wake him. If she went back, some went back downstairs and something like that. Ava would probably be amused and triumphant. But it gave a sigh. It was problematic that Kinzo had stayed shut away during this entire once-a-year conference, not even coming down to greet anyone. Even the family head, no, especially the family head, couldn't fail to make an appearance. I wonder if I can convince him myself. Oh, not, uh, a Nazi readied herself and used the key that she had borrowed from Genji to open the door. E rattling! Dead body, dead body, dead body, dead body, dead body, come on, big bucks, big bucks, big bucks, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. stop! Even though she prepared for the sweet scent, which seemed, which, seemed to, which, she seemed, which seemed to eat into one's brain as it poured out the smell, small crack in the door, she couldn't help but grimace. Thinking that he might still be sleeping, not so he entered the room quietly. Thinking? Damn it! I wanted she... a dead body! I'm an alive body, thank you! Fuck! When she did, Kinzo's already awake and looking out the window. So, so, you're awake. Good morning. How did you get in? I spoke with, with, his, with his back, still facing her. Her voice was not harsh, but calm, and not so he was slightly reassured. However, though he was awake, he wouldn't have ignored all the knocking if uh, he was in a good mood. Not so he wasn't able to relax. My sincere apologies. <clears throat> I asked Genji-san, and he allowed me to borrow the key to the study. Oh, Genji did. If my friend thought I was it, it was that important, then I'd have no choice but to listen. So, what business do you have with me? Well, well. <laughs> breakfast will be ready soon. And I would greatly appreciate it if you would join us. I will eat here. Have it brought here like always. But father... This family conference happens only once a year. Please at least let them see your face. Go back downstairs. Her asking to join is, is that they discuss how to chew up my inheritance after I die. 
Everyone's How foolish! Let them speak of such matters as much as they as they please without me. Hey, I'm oh, sorry. I just want to know: Have we actually heard Kenzo's voice? I mean, like you want to hear his what? voice acting? Yeah, I was just kind of curious what he actually sounds like. I don't think we've like heard it. anybody's oh, voice. Yeah, we haven't heard anyone's voice. Oh, yeah. okay. I just sense you giving him like a really like ah kind of voice. I was kind of. I, I mean, like he's not far off. It that's actually pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, give me one if you want. I, it, it'd be a little bit of a pain in the ass to swap between the voice acting right now, because, you know, the stuff. Alright, go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what you call your, call a family conference. It's hardly worth leaving my room for it. I am busy. Do not bother me. His last words carry the threat that any further questions would not be appreciated. Natsuhi realized that adding any further pleas would finally bring his wrath down upon her. She didn't look forward to facing Ava's sarcasm. There's nothing more that Natsuhi could do. Is that so? Understood. I'm sure everyone will be sorry to hear it, but I will tell them. Natsuhi decided to give up. Bowing silently, tried to leave the room before Kinzo's spasm spasmodic temper could flare up. As she did, Kenzo spoke to her. It was so calm and gentle, it felt like it came from an entirely different person. Nazi. It has been quite some time since he married into the Ashermia family. It, yes. It has been many years since I was first permitted to bear the name of Shiromiya. Do you sometimes long for your previous family? No. <laughs> Marriage means abandoning your birth family. I am Ushiro Miya Natsuhi. The Ushiro Miya family is the only family I can come to. The only one I am fucked of. He truly wasn't exaggerating. That was the resolve that she had felt whenever she applied the Ushiro Miya family name to herself. Precisely why she was so saddened when her husband didn't treat her like an Ashura Mia, leaving her to race about in vain. If Cross were a woman, and you his husband... No, I won't say that. What do you mean by that? The father. Natsuhi was shocked. Uh, if Kinzo's words were just now or what they seemed, it would have more than enough to make up for all that she had suffered up to that point. Forget it! The nonsense of an old man. Kinzo once again faced away from her. Well, forget about it, but Nazi couldn't help the feeling help the feeling of uh, warmth in her heart. Father. Even though I, Natsuhi, am not connected to you by blood, I am still your daughter. I will most assuredly see to it that your honor and glory and everything you have left behind are protected. You don't have the right to wear the one-winged eagle. However, the one-winged eagle is surely engraved upon your heart. That is irrefutable proof that you are my blood relative. One will inherit the glory of the Ashermia family. Some will sneer there is no eagle on your clothes. But such words are not worth lending an ear to. Only those who hold the eagle in their hearts are my true blood relatives. And I consider it an honor that you were welcomed into the Ashermia family. Without saying anything more, Kinzo remained with his back to Natsuhi. However, Natsuhi couldn't help but feel something warm up, warm well up within her, that she hadn't felt since long ago, when she had just been just a ch when she when she had been just a child. Now, Natsuhi bowed silently to the, to his back and left the room. Ah, oh, good timing. How was father? 
You were taking so long, so I came to check. When Natsuhi left the study, she saw Ava climbing the stairs, and their eyes met. Ava was smirking unpleasantly, thinking that Natsuhi would leave drudgingly after failing to convince Kinzo. However, the way Natsuhi was now, the fervorous laugh was not, would not disturb her. She preferred to wear the family crest on her clothing. She preferred to wear it in her heart. But she spoke calmly, clearly and confidently. The dignity of one who would protect the Ashirmia family is glory. Father said he would not join in on the family conference. He says he has no interest in discussing such obscene matters. I figured you'd say something like that. If you fail to persuade Father, just say so. How pitiful. I'm beginning to see why Father lamented so. What do you mean by that? Natsuhi did not answer. Just as Kinzo had done so earlier, she showed Ava her back and headed down the stairs. Ava finally realized that she was being made fun of, but something that had happened so quickly to quickly bolster Natsuhi's confidence. Even so, she Go, apparently girl. didn't have the courage to risk Kinzo's wrath. Unable to even knock on the doors, she could only click her tongue, make a motion as though scratching at it, and follow after Natsuhi. So, were Nisan and the rest there? Did you ask Father about them? I didn't get the chance to ask, but they were not inside the study. Father would never let them into his room to discuss such a lowly topic, so it is unlikely he knows where they went. Let us go downstairs and wait for the servants to return from their search. Breakfast may be late, but how would you like some tea, Avisa? Th that would be fine. Hmm. No, oh, bitch is such a can't bitch. Ava couldn't hide her confusion at this complete indifference in Natsuhi's attitude. She acting so boldly, and while Ava hated to admit it, she even had a sense of dignity about her. Well, to find fault with anything, Ava could only follow Natsuhi back to the parlor. Then when we returned to the parlor, Hideyoshi had been joined by the four children and Nanjo. Genji, who had been talking with Hideyoshi, reported the current situation when he noticed that Natsuhi had returned. You still have not found my husband and the rest? Yes, my apologies. Also, Kumiso has started preparing breakfast. She said that she will need it just a little longer. The clock read a little past eight o'clock. Eight should have been the time, the time to start breakfast. Normally going over that time limit would be a disgrace to the host. Oh, Conan is searching outside. Also, no one has seen Shannon, either. What the- You- Riri, did you burrow under my blanket? <laughs> oh, cute dog. <laughs> oh, sorry, Chelly's back. Hey, Chelly's here. Hey, I am indeed here. <laughs> I, I have been summoned- out from under my two. blanket. He burrowed under it. <laughs> really? I'm sorry, I missed the first half of the session. Oh my it's god. Fine. It's fine. fine. Don't mind. We, we did sorry. not have to install at all. <laughs> you are this right now, Shelly. I'm just surprised so little happened in like an hour and a half. Well, a lot happened, actually. A lot happened, uh, but it's nothing a lot has like happened. major. Nothing like a lot major. happened. Nothing to like, nothing super important. But... A lot of good setup. Are you on your phone, Shelly? Yeah. Uh, yeah, give me a second. I'm just using my shitty earbuds because I panicked and wanted to jump uh, in here. I'm gonna get my good shit. All right. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, no yeah. problem. Okay. Just, just, uh, just uh, remember to mute. I always forget. That, I always forget that your your AC sounds like it's made by a Kuriyama Oka. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wait, who's a Kuriyama Yoka? The he is the know. composer for Silent Hill. Damn. Oh. Yeah. You know. Uh, anyways. Places. 
Mm-hmm. Back yeah, to Crimson. it. We know. We know Crimson. Not focusing <clears throat> around. Let's get on it. Even Shannon's missing. Truly, just how many people did my husband bring with him on his little walk? Just how many people had gone missing by now? Now that the number was this large, we're starting to feel truly unpleasant. As though the people here were, only, were the only ones being left out of something interesting. At least they seem to reflect the feeling of the children, and Maria in particular. She was indignant, her stomach grumbling, almost as though her mother and the others left her alone to go off and eat something delicious without her. Food. The children were flipping through the channels on the television, and I found a program that might interest Maria and cheer her up again. Nanda was sitting on the sofa, gazing blissfully at the children while reading a book. It must have been a book about chess. How very on point. Then the footsteps came rushing towards them with a pitter-patter. Only one set, so that they realized it before, before seeing who it belonged to, this is probably canon, not Krauss and the rest. Madam, excuse me. Judging by your appearance, you still haven't been able to find them. My apologies. I still haven't. <sighs> that will be enough. You've worked hard. I should know where they were, but they had to be somewhere on the island. They hadn't been. They hadn't been a thing. To, there hadn't been a thing to eat since the pre. They hadn't had a thing to eat since the previous night. Snugs will be grumbling about now. Probably came plodding back of their own accord before long. By now, Natsuhi was thoroughly exasperated and started to feel that there was no reason for them to go out of their way in search. I will go to the kitchen to prepare some tea for all of the guests. Thanks to both of you for all of your hard work so early in the morning. Not so he left the parlor, acting as though the release intention had caused a new surge in her headache. Anne tried to call her back, but not so he left swiftly. What is it? Was there something else? Yes. I was unable to. I was unable to find her husband or anyone else. But, well. Cannon sounded evasive. Looks as though he didn't know where they were, but he had spotted something that might that may be connected to their disappearance. Avon Hideyoshi noticed this exchange of words and came over. I picked up something strange in Cannon's behavior. What's going on, Cannon? Did you find Cross Nissan and everyone else? Two kings on screen right now. Sorry, I had to get that out. <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, the Rose Garden storehouse looked strange. What do you mean? It looked strange. It was, um... How should I explain it? Cannon hesitated once more. That wasn't at all what he'd expect from a usually fearless boy. Seeing this, Ava and Hideyoshi looked at each other dubiously. What do you mean? Are you saying Nissan and the others were inside the storehouse? No, I'm going to inspect inside now. I just came back to get the key, but... Um... I don't really get it, but it sounds like we've gotta just gotta keep looking around inside it. Where's the key to the star house? It is in the servant room. Let us check inside the storehouse at once. Cannon mm -hmm. dashed off to the servant room and returned with the key. He ended up the parlor saying that he would go check, but then Ava and Hideyoshi followed after him. But was this something strange about the storehouse, the storehouse that had caused the usually fearless Cannon to hesitate? It was still pouring outside, but perhaps their curiosity over this something that Cannon couldn't talk about won out. While the children made a big fuss watching television, Cannon and the rest dashed over to the entrance. <clears throat> the Rose Garden Storehouse was a place that, that, that housed various tools used to manage the garden. It was definitely not a pretty building. 
Because of its appearance, it had been built so that it, would be, it, would, it was hidden in a corner of the, of the Rose Garden. Cannon, Genji, and Ava and Hideyoshi came cutting across the Rose Garden holding umbrellas. Into the small patches off the Rose Garden. Which was, a, which was normally off limits for those appre appreciating the, the garden and only used by those maintaining it. Of the Ashdowns that, the Storos came into view in front of them. It was quite an old shed. Rid of the flawlessly perfect beauty of the Rose Garden, it was pretty seedy looking. You understand why it had been built in such a hard to see place. Ava and Hideyoshi arrived at the storage house long after uh, Canon and Genji. Ha! Ha! You turn sure fast! Tell my home is gonna explode! I never knew they had a storehouse way over here. But. What is that? Also, dear, for Christmas, I'm getting you something two words, gym membership. When Ava looked at where Kanan Cannon was posting, she was at a loss for words. Noticing this, Hideyoshi also followed Cannon's finger, and was likewise too shocked to speak. The entrance of the source was a kind of shudder. And there... Everyone suddenly realized why Cannon had been able to find words to describe where, where, what, they, what they now saw. On the shudder... Which is completely filthy for being exposed to wind and rain for so long. Stuck right on it. There was something that looked, 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 looked like a strange, dark red liquid. Mucus? Or maybe it was some sticky paint. An indescribably eerie shape was drawn on the shutter with some kind of ghastly substance. The rain had caused it to drip down like fresh blood leaking from an open wound. No more beating around the bush. Some kind of mark was drawn there. With a ghastly substance that looked like blood. But that seemed to suggest something ominous. Two circles were drawn there, and inside of them was a design that looked like a, looked like a cross. The four ends of the cross were widely exaggerated. It looked like some kind of crest from somewhere around Europe. And the cracks between the shapes were closely packed together with some unfamiliar characters, or possibly symbols. A vulgar bit of graffiti! Could this be one of those. one of those magic circles used in demonic ceremonies? It wasn't surprising that Hideyoshi would say that about such a ghastly shape, drawn with a deep red dripping substance. When was this made? Last night, I came here before it started raining, and there's nothing on the floor here at that time. We must do something before anyone sees this. If they laid eyes upon it, it would cause them great discomfort. That's right. Even though it's just a shed, I wouldn't want to leave such an unpleasant piece of graffiti alone for even a second longer than I had to. There is some paint inside the storehouse. Let us paint over it temporarily as an emergency measure, then repaint it again someday when the weather is good. Hmm. Can't you remember that you just recently seen another scribble, and that it would have made that are made with a strange, dark red substance of the, of the same color as this. That must have been. That's right. It have been the scene on the door in Natsuki's room. Canon could. Let's remove this scribble quickly and go back, okay? Even though it's just a storehouse, it's really irritating to have graffiti around the home I was brought up in. Yes, madam. We'll take care of it immediately. Cannon squatted in front of the shutter and unlocked it. He then lifted it up with all of his strength. A boisterous noise resounded, and the eerie shape drawn on the shutter began to get sucked in through the top as the, the shutter was raised. At least for the time being, that ominous drawing disappeared from the direct gaze, and they all breathed a sigh of relief.
Thanks to a kids program they came across, Marie was feeling much better. In this scene of the anime, Marie is watching Higarashi. <laughs> oh, this is the scene. Yeah. Adler and Jessica were poking fun at the kids' show at every turn, cackling together. George is enjoying the program with Maria from her perspective. Nan is on the sofa by himself, passing the time they're reading quietly. They heard hurried footsteps coming from the hallway. They were footsteps of a single person. Did that mean that there wasn't a group of the four that had just left? It was Genji. Sorry for Genji, who considered, be, who, was, who considered being out of breath a violation of a servant's virtues, to be gasping for air. He had become dashing back from the outside of the mansion. His shoulders were soaking wet, and he didn't have the, his usual trim appearance. When Genji noticed Nanja was looking at him, he gave a small, silent bow and quickly approached him. Dr. Nanja, my apologies. Please come with me quickly. What's the matter? The guy whispered something in Nanjo's ear. Nanjo went pale. He was from the sofa, trying not to be noticed, not trying not to be noticed by the children who were still engrossed by the TV. The two of them rapidly left the parlor, muffling their footsteps. They arrived at the exit of the parlor. They came across Natsuhi, who was pushing a servant card loaded with a tea set. Genji whispered something inside into Natsuhi's ear, and Natsuhi went pale, too, in apparent shock. But leaving the servant cart where it was, the three of them dashed towards the entrance. George was then running down the rose, gar down the rose garden through the window. <coughs> What's that? Isn't Genji son and Dr. Nancho? And that's Aunt Natsui, isn't it? What's up, Anarchy? Maybe something happened. They look terribly flustered. Just got Maria saw that Ava, Hideyoshi, and Nanja were no longer in their seats, and left that the servant guard had been abandoned in the entrance of the parlor. I was aware that something, something was the matter. Could there have been some kind of accident? Let's go check it out. The fun for the low ones left, uh, left out, right? <laughs> For some reason, what Badler said sounded, exactly, sounded extremely indiscreet. They couldn't deny that there was a little, they were a little insecure and concerned after seeing an, a, the adults run off in the rain without regards to their appearance. Let's check it out, okay? I'm worried something might have happened. Just because uneasy words spoke for all of them. Hey, Maria, are you coming too? Will you watch TV? Huh? Wanna watch TV? Let's go. Let's go on without her. Maria Chan will be back soon. You keep watching TV, okay? Huh. Come on, dead body, dead body, dead body, dead body. No way, no way, no way. By the time, by the, time the kids made it outside, the adults were no longer in sight. But Jessica seemed to have a pretty good idea when they uh, when they were gone. Judging by the dis dis discretion they had made, they, they, they had been running. The, the, the direction they had been running. Blah, 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 blah. Bah. Following Jessica, they ran through the rain soaked rose garden. Come on. The wind seemed to be suddenly get stronger. The much of sound of thunder began to ring out like it had the previous night. Like an eerie so something had surrounded the island and was trying to stop us from moving forward. Jessica, something over this way? I'm pretty sure there's a storehouse for gardening tools or something. <clears throat> when in the world could be going on in a place like that? Jessica, Jessica, just as Jessica had said, they begin to see a storehouse in front of them. You can also see, see the adults on. there. So in the Crimson Dance, open. you're questioning them. And Sorry. Several, let me just, let me go. Trust me, you're, you're gonna see something. Several adults looked as though they were searching for something. For some reason, only Nazi was outside the storehouse. But even holding an umbrella, she looked like she was hanging her head, and her back was facing them. It was Genji, Nanjo, and Natsuhi who had just left the mansion. When they left earlier, Kanan, Ava, and Hideyoshi were also there, begging for a small crowd of people. Absolutely no bustle of activity. When Natsuhi realized that the children were approaching, a terrible expression rose to her face, ran to them with a, at them with her arms spread wide. You mustn't come any closer. Go back to the mansion. However, no. 
because of that. The kids of the scene the Nazi was trying to keep keep them keep them away from. Also, a preemptive banger alert. <laughs> Inside the storehouse, with its shutters wide open, a faint fluorescent light shone down, and right there was. Hang on, my thing isn't doing it. Jessica's piercing shriek <laughs> ran out. Rang out. That th wasn't just because Jessica's stream was the loudest. The same thing spilled out of Battler and George's mouths as well. It might cut me off. Ava spread her arms just like Nazi, roaring at the kids with a bow and chilling expression on her face. George, take everyone to the turret to the mansion. Quickly. Right now. When Natsuhi spread her arms, I thought she was trying to prevent us from advancing any further. But that wasn't why Ava was spreading her arms right now. She's trying to stop us kids from seeing, just seeing that terrible scene. It was her mother's heart. She broke the eyes and hearts of us children by blocking our view of the terrible scene that was by at least the width of one of her arms. Is this some kind of joke? Is it? seen this kind of cheap scene all too often. In manga, TV, anime, and movies, I've seen it all over again. This was just... It was just seeing something appear in real life that I'd seen plenty of times before in some, in some of those more sen sensational movies, right? That alone shouldn't... Uh, but that suit... It's that old bastards, isn't it? I get it. And that's Uncle Kraus. And Kyrie-san, and Aunt Rosa. Nyaaah! You mustn't, Jessica. You mustn't go in. You mustn't look. Dead! Dead! Ah! Rigor mortis is sitting across almost the entire body. Most likely six hours or more of person's death. As far as I can tell by looking at the damaged area, there is a high probability they were damaged after their deaths. No, I must watch what I say. I'm a general practitioner examining corpses is outside my area of expertise. So what does that mean? Just killing them wasn't enough? So I went and do something like this? The devil's... Wait, the devil... This, the devil. This here is the work of the devil. <laughs> we got Nazi it. Nazi caught Jessica in her arms, and on Ava caught George Anarchy. That was the only one who could approach the entrance of this to the storehouse. Uh, if, been there, there, if only that had been something to catch me too. If only to have this horrible, evil scene burn into my eyes. No, that's not it. There's no one here to catch me people who should catch me. They're right there, aren't they? Because Jessica said, they look like a storage house from gardening tools. A lot more with extra blades. A grass sickle and a hammer. And carpentry tools such as a saw. Piled up plots of potted plants and bags of fertilizer. They're just the same. Groups of several people have been laid to rest there. No. I've been tossed in there! Tell them by their clothes. That old bastard and Kyrie son. Uncle Kraus and Aunt Rosa. Beyond that, Goda son and. Are there still more of them? How many people died? You're fucking kidding me! I can't get them, I can't them on one hand! Damn it! I didn't know whether there had been one of those gardening tools, which, if used for something other than their intended purpose, could, be def could definitely be wielded with a naked brutality. Or the, the horrible two have been brought here, and f especially for this. Anyway, each one of their bodies jammed in here had been given an atrocious makeup. It wasn't makeup. It was more like their faces had been plowed. Their faces were smashed. According to expressions that normal people can't make even after death. I couldn't tell where their eyes or noses were. But I, could even, I couldn't even find their mouths. Because they were gaping wide. Their gums exposed! But their front teeth were missing. The cheeks that should have covered them, covered all this, were torn up by, torn up and laid bare. Uh, 
The training and makeup you always spend so much time on, even though you're a man, isn't doing a thing now! No, Dad! <laughs> I always thought you were going to hell! But still, not like this, right? This is a son of a bitch that you should have had to suffer so brutally! And Kyrie, son! Did you stop going out with this guy? There's absolutely no reason for you to end up like this! They've got no faces! No faces! Damn it, damn it, damn it! Ah! But my son, you mustn't look anymore. There's no way your mother and father would have wanted you to see them like this. For your mother and your father's sake, you mustn't look anymore. That people are supposed to have faces that look like they're sleeping peacefully, right? They've got no faces! My dad and Kyrie-san have no faces! I didn't even know what kind of faces they were wearing when they died! What's wrong with me? Do they have these smashed monster-like faces every time I remember them? That's just great! Don't remember that old bastard smug face anyway! Just great! Just fucking great! Why even Kyrie-san's face? Kyrie-san wasn't a crook. Sure, she ticked me off now and a, a bit now and again, but then... You're a cool big sister to me. This is wrong. This is all wrong! Well, Kraus had it better, didn't he? Not his whole face, just the side! He's got half of his face left, right? It's still better. That's still better! My mic is not checking me out here. Wait. No! Just get filled the ears of the sound of her own screaming. I'm gonna shut up my reckless words. Stop it, Battle Gun! Just stop it! Just stop! Anarchy! Anarchy! Ah! Disregarding age and appearance, I fell to my knees, looking at Anarchy's waist and sobbing. As if I was crying on behalf of everyone there. Looking the feelings of everyone there, I screamed over and over. Father, <laughs> the ones lying over there, our Uncle Kraus, Rudolph, Aunt Kyrie, and Aunt Rosa and Godasan. Just those five, right? Now, six. There's one more person over here. The body Hideyoshi was looking down on now. Happened to be hidden among the shadows in the morning in the, in the mountain range of objects. In a blind spot to George, who was stood by the entrance. But George couldn't tell whose body it was. So George cursed himself. He cursed the fact that, th that his worst guess was always turned out to be right. So, the one lying at your feet is. It's Shannon, isn't it? Yes. That's fun and fun. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, you're gonna show them the-, the I'm gonna show them the thing right now? Yeah, so, um, this happens when people die. Oh! <laughs> They're we red. Now show the character sprite. I see! So, before oh, we read it- Oh, Jesus! Before right. we read it, uh, I wanna know, uh, when a character dies, uh, they show parts of where they get fucked up on the screen with blood. Shit! Also, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to them. Sorry to the viewers at home uh, who who know some things about the funny little Umineko gold dub that happened. I tried really hard to mimic. Ah, uh, oh, damn it! And <laughs> fuck! And unfortunately, uh, he did not actually say that in this version of the scene. Although I would not go over Shannon's yet because we have not seen. Uh, uh, yeah, don't worry. Unless you want to. Yeah. Uh, no, we're, uh, we're gonna do it, fuck it. Alright, I'm Anyways. gonna send you a thing what just to get a confirmation. Like from this? Sure, sure. Anyways, here, I am going to... I'm gonna do these now, alright. There's Shermie a Kraus. Corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. The direct cause of death is unknown, but it seems that the side of his head was smashed after his death. We start where it all begins. There's Shermie a Rudolph. Corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. His, same, his face seems to have been smashed after his death. He has the right to lament his ill fortune. <coughs> Shumia Kyrie, corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. 
Her face seems to have been smashed after her death. She was chosen by the demon's roulette. That's all there is to it. Shimia Rosa. I'll be seeing her again, so I'm not lonely. It's the same stuff for everybody mm -hmm. else. Corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. Due to the side of her head was smashed after her death. Don't worry. Everyone will be revived in the Golden Lamp. Who is writing this? Toshihiro Goda. Corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. His face seems to have been smashed after his death. How unfortunate. Apparently he was actually supposed to be on duty in the, in the guest house. So, um, can I point something out real quick before we get to the scene? Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to know, Jesus Christ, Noir's rolls just got all fucking swiped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All two of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, wah, wah. uh, <laughs> uh Dang, I tell love me Noir's voice. Uh, as I say, just tell me when you want me to do the scene. You can go ahead now, I was just telling something <laughs> to Bone. Yeah. Oh, Bo it's Bone's turn. Uh, I already said the thing. Oh, okay. Hmm. <gasps> George fell oh. completely silent. He shook slightly, lower lip trembling. Normally, he would have wanted to run his run to his beloved's body, screaming and crying. However, before rushing for before rashly rushing forward, he would keep his composure and asked his father. Is Shannon <laughs> the same as? Uncle Krauss and the others. Uh, Hideyoshi deeply understood the meaning of those words. But he couldn't give George an immediate answer. Or rather, he felt that the silence was only sincere and loving. The only sincere and loving response he'd give George right now. And George asked if Shannon was the same. He asked whether her corpse was the same condition as the others or not. Hideyoshi hadn't denied it. And her corpse was the same in the same brutal state. Can I? Can I? Can I? Look at Shannon. No, you can't. Why not? After all, I won't be able to see Shannon's face again, right? So, why won't you let me see what her face looked like at the end? The last time you met Shannon Chan was yesterday, right? Yeah. I see. When you left her, what kind of face was she showing you? <laughs> it was... It was a wonderful smile. <laughs> After he handed her the ring, she hesitated, even though she must have already made up her mind. Then she looked bashful, and ran away because she was embarrassed to let him see that her face looking like that. That's the expression that was revised, revived in, in George's mind. I see. Then I'm sure Shannon Chan would want you to leave, I would like to leave you with that smile in your memory. The Ish looked down upon Shannon's body lying at his feet. The other bodies was such a horrible state that it would make anyone want to cover their eyes. Her head had been smashed in from the side, and more than half of her expression remained. If the remaining blood-soaked half of her expression had been wiped clean, would that graceful smile of hers have peeked out? But only half of it. Without thinking, Hideyoshi slapped his hands over his eyes. How brutal. If her face was going to be crushed anyway, then if, then if only all of it had been crushed. He might have been able to temporarily distract George from his pain by making the pathetic suggestion that it was someone else wearing Shannon's clothes. But half of her face had been left untouched. It caused the body so much humiliation. Proving beyond doubt that the body was Shannon's and no one else's. How inhuman. How brutish. And there. Trying his best to burn the image of the remaining half of Shannon's expression into his eyes as she lay at Hideyoshi's feet. Was Cannon. Cannon was not crying. Tears had risen to his eyes. They did not drip down. That didn't mean he wasn't feeling as much sadness as everyone else. 
using Shannon, who had lived who had lived with him in the same orphanage, who had been loved as his sister. It must have been just the same as losing a blood relative. George! I'm sure Shannon Chan is saying thank you. She must have been glad you didn't end up seeing her in such a pitiful state. I'm sure she's thanking you for holding strong and showing restraint. <laughs> I, I understand. I, I understand, Father. I, I understand. Against the outside wall of the storehouse, crouching down limply. Father, I have a request. What is it? I want you to look at, to look for me. Is there a ring on Shannon's finger? A ring. Let me see. Hideyoshi crouched down. As he did, Cannon suddenly pointed one of Shannon's hands. Yeah, there it is. It's a diamond ring. It's a valuable diamond. Must have been pretty expensive. Uh, and... Which... Which hand? Or which finger is it on? Mm, the ring finger of her left hand. I see. So Shannon Chan was engaged? George. Don't tell me you... Emma! That doesn't matter now. A man made a lifelong promise to Shannon Chan. A man promised her happiness for life. Who that man it was isn't the issue here. Being told that by a man is a woman's dream, isn't it? I don't know when she received this ring. I also don't know who gave it to her. However, even so, Shannon Chan took this ring. Then she accepted it and put it on her left ring finger. I'm sure the man who gave that to her was also happy. Most of the people were there. Hiyoshi was simply disturbed by this extraordinary situation and was blurting out strange things. However, someone who knew of George and Shannon's true relationship would understand the full meaning of those words. I... I see. Thank you. Father. George stood up. Traces of tears still streaked his face. His expression had returned to its usual calm one. Let's go. Bower Kun, Jessica Chan. If we stay here any longer, we'll get in the way of the adults. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Jessica sniffled once, showing her face to her mother, rolling her the whole time to let her know that she was okay now. When she faced George again, she once again had on her usual expression. Though she still couldn't smile. Battler. <clears throat> Hang in there. Battler kept on crouching in front of his parents' bodies. I'm sorry. Crying like hell calmed me down. Bastard. Dad. I bet you're laughing at me. After all that shit I talked about you. Here I am crying like a baby just because you died. Oh, so what? I guess I just got the gene that makes you cry when your parents kick the bucket. Bradley's face was still bright red with tears. They at least recovered enough fit to fake a smile. If only a bitter one. Cannon. You mustn't remain here any longer either. Take the children and return to the mansion. Natsuhi had been standing under the rain this whole time. Take a step in the storehouse. Maybe she had her own way of grieving, different from Battler's. 
Feeling that she had to take on the role of responsibility now that her husband was dead. She gave Cannon those orders. Yes. Um. Cannon rose silently and turned to face me. His face was pure white. Almost as though his own heart had died along with Shannon. There was no life in his expression. An ordinary day if he had been told to guide the children to the, to the beautiful Rose Garden. Cannon might have led the way. But now there was no distinction between Cannon and the children. And now just killed about the same age. Suffering from the pain of losing those close to them. But in making sure the children were leaving, Natsuhi started giving orders to Genji. Genji. Contact the police immediately. They probably won't be able to come until the typhoon passes, but they should be able to tell us what to do next. Understood. There's an emergency radio, so I will use that to contact them. When she heard that, Natsuhi remembered. That's right. Phones were out today, weren't they? However, they also had a radio, since they couldn't necessarily rely on phones all the time while living on an isolated island. At any rate, you start by contacting the, po the police and receiving their, instru their instructions. Everything else could wait. Dr. Nanjo. Is there anything more you can do here? Unfortunately, there is nothing I can do. Understood. I have no idea what you thought I could do. Genji, could you at least cover their faces with something? Exposing them like this is humiliating to them as well. Yes, madam. Genji picked up several dried up towels from inside the storehouse. They were stopped him with a shrill voice. Wait a second! Stop! <clears throat> this is the scene of a crime, isn't it? Then we mustn't disturb it! We all panicked and walked in here with our shoes on, but even that will surely get in the way of the police's investigation, right? Not so he glared at Ava, offended. Objectively speaking, Ava was right. Even so, she glared at Ava through as though accusing her of refusing to do those to do those tragic corpses, which had been humiliated even after death. The simple kindness of covering their faces. However, Ava had spoken both calmly and correctly. This horrible situation definitely wasn't an accident. It was a crime. Someone had killed them. It was a murder case. So, they need to be careful to avoid disturbing the site any further. I would agree with Ava, son. Until the police come, we shouldn't. We should leave everything be. Bro, no. What do you say, madam? You're right. Very well. Close it up. And just in case, we should put a different lock on it. And Chris, sit in the corner and think about what you've just done. A different lock? I mean, no, the wrong voice. A different lock? Yeah. Um. Yes. When we came here, the shutter was locked. That means the culprit used the key to shutter the lock. Into the shutter to lock it. That, that makes sense. So does that mean the key that opens the shutter will have the culprit's fingerprints on it? I'm sure it will be worth submitting it to the police's evidence. But Kanon-kun usually has it, and he used it to unlock the shed just now. It'll probably have can it'll probably have Cannon's fingerprints on it. <clears throat> also, that key was handed to Genji-san just now, and he took it with his bare hands. 
It doesn't look like it'll be very useful as evidence. That was careless of me. My apologies. Thank you, son. Are there any other keys in the storehouse? No. Only this one. So the copper walked out of the servant's room with this key. With that key. And then was nice enough to return the key to where they found it. Hiyoshi's theory sounded plausible, but was actually very strange if you thought about it. I bet they got all the trouble of returning a key they stole. No, if you think about it even more deeply, there's some points that are even more bizarre. If a criminal hides a body, they're usually trying to delay the point at which it'll be found, so they can use the time to escape. The six weren't necessarily killed here, but it was reasonable to assume that they were killed somewhere on this island, here until the star wasn't hidden to delay the discovery of the crime. And yet the eerie magic circle scribbled on the storehouse shutter had eloquently indicated the location of the hidden corpses. Sure, it didn't explicitly mention the corpses, but six people had gone missing. The situation someone had made such an obvious place paced piece of graffiti, he returned the key to the shutter. Also, they wanted the corpses here to be discovered. Also, I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm gonna have to take a second because I gotta take a piss. Speaking of that shed, so I actually remember that scene from the well, actually, uh, well, yeah, yeah, I remember that scene from the anime, and like, uh, whenever I heard shed, my or like something about the sword shed, my like heart spiked and like, oh, we're getting there. Yeah, I saw the DMs. So, um, <laughs> hey, uh, so fun fact, I'm gonna take a tally of who said who was gonna die first. So Khan had predicted Hideyoshi and Kinza would be the first to die, or at least one and of I them. I was way off. Um, Bone Kit had predicted Kinzo. Yeah, I also said that I'm probably wrong, but it was kind of like the go-to with as with how many how little info we had. I mean, and that's a fun. That's a fun of predictions. You get a golden star because you called Rudolph and Kyrie. Who me? Oh, did he? Yeah, you said that you thought Rudolph and Kyrie <laughs> would die first, so you get a golden so, star. Was right. Wait, did you, oh, did, was that just a guess or a boot? Yes, it was just a blank guess. Alright. Yeah, and that's the fun of guess. Is sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. That's I, probably on, one I, of the I, most heartbreaking poems about that. Oh, I didn't think Shannon would die, but looking back on it, holy fuck, there were so many death flags. It's kind of funny whenever you yeah. said, who did you think is going to die first? And you could have actually rolled a D, like a, like a, you'd use like a 1 to 6 on a D20 or something. So, um, to, to fill this place with a little bit of content, so it's kind of worth it. Um, at the time, I was with uh, Bone and uh, Khan. Um, not necessarily with a con on Hideyoshi, but I, I was like, oh, it's gonna kick off with, like, Kinzo dying, and then, like, there's going to be shit kicking off. And then we got to this, and I went, oh, fuck! Yeah. <sighs> I... I'm back. Man, I remember being at that, uh, proposal scene where, like, shit, uh, George put it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Man, that's the... And just immediately slapped in the face with the Shannon discovery. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, fucking... Shannon. That was near that immediate. Hits. It's yeah. not, you could say also, I, ex I extremely apologize, but do you mind if I get the strawberries so quick? I never got the chance to get them. Sure, we're at, we're actually just discussing a little bit. Yeah, we're having, right. a, little, we're having a little mid session discussion. Uh, hey, uh, Orange, do you mind if we go to the tips real quick? Will that fuck with anything? What tips? Uh, what? Huh? Sure. The the, or the character sheet, I should say, not the tips. Okay. Fuck. Uh, back. Um. So I, I guess I. Uh, did I actually save comparisons to these for the original and new ones? If not, let me go ahead and download one. So let me let me get uh, who do you, whose sprite do you want to see uh, comparison wise for the the, the dead thing? Wait, yeah. So that thing, you know what? I'll just use Gota because Gota's right weird. there. Let me go find Gota. I, it's so weird because I forget his first name starts with a T. So um. Hey, this is what it looks like in the OG sprites when you look at the character sheet. Eh. Do you want to throw that up on the same I think I prefer uh, the new ones. Eh, alright, sure. So does it actually specifically detail... So, um, I will say that... I will say this, um, I think the, the Pachinko sprites, as much as we should on them, hey, I think the gore effect is a little bit more visceral on these. Whoa! <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, that is visceral. All right, here is classic Gota. And uh, here is Gota HD. Uh, I already posted already it. Looking up. I know, I'm posting them on the, on the stream so people can see it. Oh, okay. Gooey! Yeah. Like the, I see like, the painting like I saw. Feel... Like OG in the PS3 sprites, it's just a red blotch. Well, actually, can you pull up the PS3 again, real quick? Oh, God damn, I just uh, deleted the source. Uh, no, the PS3 uh, oh, version, PS3, so just go yeah, to the characters. Sense. I feel like I could poke the, the Pachinko one with a stick and Goo would get on the stick. Ew. I was looking at the chat. Okay, the character. Gouda. Yeah, are we done with doing like uh, the story, or are we gonna keep uh, going? I mean, we can keep. We can uh, keep well, now. we're gonna keep going. There's a chapter break literally coming up real close. Yeah, yeah, there should be. We can go a little bit longer. Don't worry. I'd rather yeah, keep just a going bit. for a chapter just break. A smidge. So, um, it's a little bit. It's not like a blob of red. Like he took a. Uh, she took a fucking. Uh, 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 red paint can to it, but um, it, I, I would say like weirdly, the steam sprites have this weird visceralness to them that uh, unfortunately isn't carried to PS3. The manga one, that that one's actually visceral. The manga has like a skull and bone, and yeah, like it's much, much more like graphic and goes into it. Normally, like see them like this. Oh, I have. Uh, I apologize for the hiatus. I have returned. Also, I want my uh, AC had asked me if I wanted to see the manga panels, and I had said I want to see all. Of I want to see them except for Shannon because I went. Shannon's like I can't deal with that. Shannon didn't deserve that shit. <laughs> yeah, they got yeah, their Shannon faces smashed. Deserve Nobody deserves that shit. Except I mean, yeah. even these rich assholes don't deserve that. I mean, uh, why don't you look at Kraus? <laughs> you, uh, Mr. Sexism. <laughs> It's not Exists the do not it's deserve it's getting their faces smashed in, man. But the ones that deserved it the least were Goda, Shannon, and Kyrie. Goda? Uh, wait, 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 they deserved it? They deserved it the they least. They deserved it less. Oh, least. least. Are you sure for that? Yes. With Goda, we don't know what he did in his path. And can we wrap up and get to the chapter break now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Let's go ahead and head This it. is no longer being made. In this situation, someone had made such an obvious piece of graffiti and even returned the key to the shutter. Also, they wanted the corpses to be here to be discovered. Anyway, we can't put all our faith into a, in a lock that a culprit has opened once before. If we want to protect this place from the culprit's hand, I think we should put a new lock on it. I think that's a good plan. I agree. Genji fished around and saw the storehouse and saw the brand new padlock that had been inside a small box. What should I do with the key? I will take it. I will take responsibility and hand it over to the police. Natsuki took the key to the padlock from Genji's hand. After that, they all ex exited and lowered the shutter. The corpses were once again sealed behind the shutter, which was still covered with a creepy magic circle. Genji crouched down in front of the shutter, shutter to fashion the new, fasten the new padlock. Shutters often have a place in it where you can attach your own lock, in addition to the main lock of the shutter. This was one of those types. In the midst of the roar of thunder and the pouring rain, the star stood there, ominous. When it closed, sh closed shuttered the six still, still covered in a blood-like, creepy substance that swallowed the bodies of the six. To Natsuki, putting the new lock on wasn't mainly to preserve the scene for the police. I felt like it was she wanted to shut, the ma shut, the mouth for all shut that mouth for all eternity. To prevent that eerie beast from swallowing up more victims. Come on. Let's go, everyone. Dr. Nacho, thank you very much for your work. Genji, hurry up and contact the police. I will do so as as I return. Wait, isn't the phone dead? Uh, they radio. just explained radio. they have an emergency radio. Oh, radio, right. The adults left the storehouse. The ghastly magic circle around the shutter to keep, kept the six bodies in it. 
I mean, it really is. It's not the lightning occasionally let it up. And last. Cut. There you go. I bet that radio is going to be dead. Orange. <laughs> so we'll call it there for the night, right? Yeah, we're done for now. That, that seems oh, like a pretty logical oh. place to stop. <laughs> not like this, man. Big murder. Oh, well, we oh, have to. Man. So, I have my notes right here in front of me. Let's keep the rain on. That's the plan. The first point that I have to make is something that I saw back whenever you had... I keep calling it the Grimoire, but that's not what it's called. The, uh... Whenever you go to characters... Oh, or tips, right? and, no, when you go to tips and it's that thing. What is it? What is that it called? Inventory. No, not inventory. When you go into tips and it's... It, that... Ah, oh, help me out here. That. It's an epitaph. Epitaph, thank you. When you go to tips... Click on Epitaph of the Portrait. Oh, no, 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 no. The Grim... I was right! Grimoire! Grimoire is just, uh, uh, Japanese it's technology and, uh... Okay, then and it was characters. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore in so, that case. Um, uh, to, to elaborate on the Grimoire, the Grimoire was added in the Umi Project or slash whatever the fuck version this is. Um, it literally, like, it didn't exist in the prior versions. This right here. This bottom part here of Gongoda. How unfortunate. Apparently he was actually supposed to be on duty in the guest house. Does this mean that it's contradictory to what Krauss's orders were beforehand? No. Well, well, yeah, because Krauss changed the orders. Yeah, he changed the orders. Originally he was mm -hmm. supposed to be in the guest house, but that changed. But why? And that's something I want to ask. They, and that's something I have written here. They explained it. Krauss wanted people away from the conference that, that were in, like, the, 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 the quote-unquote uh, inner circle servants, like Shannon, Goda, and Cannon. They wanted them to be away from stuff, so they kept them, like, they kept them in the guest house instead and had Goda over there. Goda was in the main house. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think he meant Gen The guest house. Hmm. Yeah, Orange meant okay. Genji. I meant Genji, yeah. There you go. So that's the, that's the explanation for that at the very end. Well, alright. Let's see here. It was also interesting to learn that Shannon's real name was Sayo. Hmm? In fact, I think I actually know the translation for that. Like other Japanese words, it has more than one meaning. Okay. Depends on how you spell it. It's a, it's Actually, really one of the translations for say always depends on. Hmm. Yeah, one of the literal translations for the word Seyo is depends on. She's pretty dependent. Yeah. That's really all there is to it. Mm hmm. Well, it's one of the translations at least. Uh, anything else? It also means dependent as a means, hmm. or use as a basis. Hmm. Hmm. If used as a verb, it can also be used as literally just based. Hmm. So based Shannon on is what? based. Very based good. on what? Oh, okay. Now that's really fucking based. I mean, like, hey... They say uh, Shannon and Cannon in that order a lot of the time, so I guess they're saying Cannon is based. <laughs> hey, Josh, look at yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much that for that. Oh. I also find it interesting oh, nice. that whenever we... First blood. I also find it interesting that whenever we got back to the mansion, there wasn't a timestamp indicative of when Shannon did arrive. But we did see Genji, and we did see that Shannon saw the golden butterfly. So if we go ahead and assume that, it would have been sometime released a little bit before midnight. Mm. Because Nanjo may be rusty, and he may only work on the living, but with rigor mortis is already setting in, then they couldn't have been dead for that long. Which means sometime between... Yeah, I think he said six hours, right? He said it about five to six yep. hours. 
which means between midnight to 6 a.m. when the other servants started waking up is whenever they were murdered. But he also Actually, said, uh, Nanjo also said he's not really qualified to do that, so I wonder if he is right or not. I mean, he probably is, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, he's he's still a doctor, and obviously, hey, if I saw this, I'd be like, yeah, they're fucking dead. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, the time, though. Yeah, so the time. Some people also... know some variation of coronary work. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, like, he could be, like, maybe off, like, a couple of hours, maybe? Or maybe, like, one or two? But, like, obviously, like... Hey, like, what was it? What was the time before we cut when Shannon fucking saw the butterfly? Did anyone remember that? I saw that the clock had struck midnight. Hmm. At least from that. Otherwise, the timestamp was just four lines. So we didn't get a timestamp. Hmm. Something I've also found interesting. Kinzo, I found of all people, was alive. Two of the head servants are dead. And Kirie is also surprisingly alive. Well, actually, I would say it's one of them. Not... Actually, yeah, wait, Kyrie Kyrie is like, Kyrie oh, sorry, got sorry, murdered. sorry. Sorry, I'm losing my mind over here. I just find it interesting that these are the first people who died. Didn't Rudolph say it the other night prior that he knew he was going to be killed? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Well, he thinks that he was going to be killed, but... Uh. Mm. Mm. I feel like somebody died who shouldn't have died here. Yeah, that was shame. Like, like, no, no, like, you think, like, th that, like, they had planned to maybe, like, kill, what, like, five people, and then, like, they had to kill another one because they walked in on them or something like that? I feel more like Natsuhi was supposed to die. Oh, you think, like, the, the count was supposed to be bigger? Yeah, not exactly. Maybe Nazi was supposed to die, but maybe Shannon saw and then she got murked? Or, like... If you'll recall, Natsuki had the scorpion charm on her door. But there was also that giant weird freaky cultic blood alchemic symbol that was also on her door in blood. Was I'm not stuff? sure, but I'm pretty sure that it's a fucked up ritual. The bodies were meant to be a sacrifice, and Natsuhi was either supposed to be part of it or supposed to be dead from it. Wait, I wonder if hmm, I wonder if any of these uh, members would be willing to do like a weird ritual circle. Because, uh, okay, let's take an assumption that Beatrice is, you know, a thing. Uh, let's, uh, I doubt that she would be the one making these circles. So, mm. would any of the family be making, like, uh, cult circles at all? It also I have depends. a theory about that. Well, this they're is also... My, this is, yeah. Well, oh, they're okay, also, well, they're also circles drawn out of blood. Meaning you'd mm. have to have a lot of that supply to actually get it to work right. I mean, we've all seen Phoenix, right? Well, I mean, I assume the blood came from the body. So. Well... But I, I would. I, I'm gonna yeah, also, literally, just use pig blood, and it looks the same. Yeah, I was gonna throw this in here. It's not. I don't think we've like necessarily confirmed that it is like exactly blood. It's blood like, but that doesn't mean it's like. That doesn't 100 percent mean that it probably is blood. So keep that in mind. It Have we had any reason to disbelieve this? I mean, I'm just I'm just throwing that out there because it's like. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be blood because it's like. You know, they describe it as a red paint, so like, something, so, like... So I have, like, a pretty, like, crack theory that I want to say. Let's hear so, it. Go ahead. Alright, here's my theory. Um, yeah. On the first night, uh, Beatrice appears before Kinzo. It's like, hey, look, look, I'm, I'm already six kills in, ha ha ha. And he's like, okay, uh, to help people out, because these bodies look completely normal. It looks like they're sleeping. I'm going to bring them into the shed and hack them up with a hatchet. They're already dead. Who cares? And that's what happened. Oh, yeah, they were mutilated after they died. Yeah. Did, it, did it say that? I thought it did. Didn't it? I think, the, like, in, in this theory, the bodies, there's no way to tell what oh, the hell happened. Oh, he uh, adulterated the bodies. Wait. 
Am I misremembering? I thought I thought for sure they mentioned something about the body. It's, it's they literally did. on the screen. Uh, he right totally now. said that. Yeah, it's literally on the so screen. So they were mutilated right after death. It's literally on Shannon. It says it seems the side of her head was smashed in after her death. Uh, do we even know? Like, did did Nanjo say that, or is it just in this? Uh, uh, it's just in the tips or the character sheet. Also, uh, I think Nanjo uh, did say that. He said Rigor Mortis has stepped in. And Nanjo also... said he thought that was the case, but wasn't sure. It's still a possibility, so we can still leave it on the table. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm gonna be annoyed if that's right, because that's so on. dumb. Charlie, one second. It's not dumb. That one would second. indicate that this would indicate that that was actually a crime of, or at least, if that's the case, then how did they all die in the first place? Hold on. My question was: There was I think Beatrice used her Wait, shall I have a good time. one at a time. I never get blessed to talk. Anyways, um, uh, did we? There was a circle on um, Natsuki's door? No, it was specifically like markings, and they described it like something was trying to get in. Jesus. Bloody handprints. Whose door was it on? Natsuki's. Natsuki's. Oh, Jesus. So, was that done out of trouble? Is that like a person who had just. uh, Was that the murderer, or was that somebody trying to escape and maybe dragged? But then again, if they were dragged, there would probably be blood on the floor. uh, If you'll recall, Natsuhi had the scorpion charm that Jessica had given her on the door to her room, and it was implied that the the, the scorpion charm can reject magic, essentially. Yeah, I thought I already said that. Oh, well, I forgot. Um, And Mm. who gave gave Jessica the the, the charm? Maria! Uh, Maria! Someone and knows Maria couldn't have done people. this crap because one, she was just as asleep as everybody else was, and two, she's a little girl. Mm-hmm. She's not going go around killing people just because of all this. Mm. All right. Plus, we've seen way too many manga anime, and I've read way too many manga, seen anime, and have read other novels where the kid turned out to be the killer, and it's pretty much gotten old. So I don't think Ryukishi's gonna go that far. I mean, he had killer kids in Higarashi a lot. I mean, isn't yeah, that the something entire... Tells me that, something tells me that we're not going to get that here. <laughs> Most of that was just people being paranoid. Well, actually, no, sure. it wasn't. Uh, she, uh, but, but, yeah, I, I'm just saying that kids ended up killing each other. I mean, I mean, the small ones didn't. Like, the teenagers did, but... Yeah. Let's oh, get anything back else? Track. Okay. This is on track. <clears throat> yeah. There was also something interesting about that circle. Hmm. It looked Celtic in nature, but it feels more alchemic. Wait, did the Celts use crosses? No, that's not that. It's not Celtic. It's something else. No, it's it's probably Crimson. Crimson. Shut up, you dude! Too much information. I Wait, said it was not Celtic. That's too much information. You also said it's actually a. I just want to say, I listened to the. I watched the entire Higarashi anime before I started hanging out with you guys. It's not that hard to not spoil things. Not that hard. You just you just pretend that you don't know. That's simple. Well, we can neither confirm nor deny. Um, I will say at this point. I will say this though, um, is that um, I had seen something on the the fucking what was it the uh, the I there is something about that sigil that reminded me of something, and I will not say what because it does lead to something, but it it kind of gave me a hint of like what it was. Okay. I still have things to talk about though. Okay, keep going. And that mainly being a theory on why these people died when they did. Or at least Shannon. It could be that the means to killing them was all supernatural. And if that's the case, then Shannon would have had to go because she saw Beatrice's sigil. Or at least her butterfly. Mm-hmm. Oh, mainly, was Shannon the butterfly? Mainly, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and happened to see Beatrice's butterfly. Remember? He was in the hallway doing patrol of the manor. Remember? Uh, I don't think I was there for that. Yeah, you weren't there, Shelly. No, she did not. <laughs> yeah, uh, I-, I won't lie. Uh, out of everyone, I was the most uh, crushed up about uh, Shannon. 
uh, uh, similar to canon. Yeah, I don't think I, any I of these rich people goading. actually not Goda. Yeah, Goda. Fuck. I'm starting to confuse Goda and Genji. I mean, they're assholes, but they're not that much of an asshole. I also find it interesting that out of the children of Ginzo, Kinzo, fuck me with my mouth, I need to read more. Out of all the children of Kinzo, Ava is the only one who's still alive. You mean like blood? Oh yeah, blood. Mm. Blood, blood. blood. I'm talking about blood. Kinzo's kids, like his actual blood kids. Yeah, blood kids. I mean like, yeah, I guess you're not counting like actual, like... I think the blood. dead ones are his blood kids. Yeah, as I say, like, hey, that's doing that. God, that's Double R! Put up. I also found it interesting that some of the comments in the original grimoire, for the characters, I mean. Kyrie was chosen simply by the demon's roulette. That was tips. The other person, for Rosa, at the bottom it said, I'll see her again. Who's the one writing up the information on the characters? Well, that is up to your interpretation. Mm -hmm. No, if Battler was saying that, then he wouldn't know a thing about the demon roulette. Oh yeah, true. Maybe it's maybe it's a maybe it's a different person every thing. I don't think it was ever Battler. No. I think it may just be someone else. Oh shit, I mixed up Rose and Curie as shit. Easy, one's got good sweater puppies and the other one doesn't. How could I hate you... that I have a theory, but I can't say it because it's just future stuff. You know what? DM me. I want to see. I, I don't even want to mention it to you because I don't even want to confirm or deny. I, I'm not actually. I will confirm nothing and I will deny nothing. I just want to see it. All right. All right. I'm also finding it very interesting that they were beaten in their, their faces after they were dead. Mm -hmm. That means that's an act of aggression. Uh, Normally, if you go ahead and beat somebody to death when they're dying, or rather, this is just me from listening to too many cold case files and stories and such, mm -hmm. normally acts of aggression are just the focus of how they go ahead and die. Meaning, if they were beaten to death in the face, <laughs> bleh, 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 bleh. fuck, 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 drabble, 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 fuck my mouth, and fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah. Ugh. Bottom line. If they were beaten to death, then the gore would have been a little more, a little less noticeable, a little more rigor mortis. If they were beaten to death, if they were beaten in the face after they had died, that means they were killed off in a different fashion, and somebody with different anger went and smashed in their faces as a show of disrespect. Which makes this crime a little more painful. So, as I do have any idea of who would be that angry? Somebody who would be strong enough to go ahead and do that, first of all. Cannon's out of the question. Fuck no, you. Cannon is out of the question, and so is Natsuhi. She was asleep. We can also rule out the kids. Because George wouldn't go ahead and willingly kill this, Jessica wouldn't have the guts to go ahead and kill her dad, and Battler is... Battler. <laughs> 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 yeah. He may actually have joked about wanting his dad to be dead, but deep down he'd still go ahead and just willingly love the guy. I, Which I'm is... His father. There's shocked. a wide gulf between hating someone and wanting them dead. Exactly. Have uh, wishes come into place at all in this? Like, yeah, the concept of wishes doing so? I don't think Wait, so, wishes? Right? Yeah, for some reason I thought, like, I was thinking, wait, did I miss something about wishes or did I make that up in my head? Um... I, I think, think might been, you might be I confusing it for like when Kinzo yelling, I want to see futures. Uh, I, I could just be making it might be confusing the word wish with like wish I, considering Beatrice. I think I'm just thinking of magic and wishes being a thing together. I'm probably just re I'm making this up in my head. I don't think that's a. Yeah, I'm probably making it up in my head. Go away. Shoot. Like, wait, did somebody wish for it to happen around the butterfly? I was like, wait, that's no, that, a that was never a terrible idea. Up. Mostly, it also just doesn't make any sense. Beatrice is actually shown to have these butterflies as her symbol. And I doubt Beatrice would actually grant somebody the idea or the maimed... Oh god, what's the word? Maimed. I doubt Beatrice would go ahead and grant a wish like this and then leave those things up on the door of the 
garden house? She's not and... a fairy godmother. Yeah, she may be an alchemist and a witch, but she's not a fairy godmother. Magic does have its limits. Especially in these situations. Let's see here. Yeah, that was mainly just something I think I made up in my head out of a fake memory. So, anything else to talk about then? Hmm. Not unless anyone else has any other theories involved. Well, I can't say because I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, no, wait, 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 you already read the story, you fuck. Alright, well, if uh, we don't have anything else to say, I will wrap things up for you, uh, because we are mm -hmm. steadily moving towards three hours into uh, the stream. Uh, Kaneko. Yes? Do you have any current suspects on who may have killed all these people? As cliche as it sounds, I'd have to say Kinzo. Hmm. He's the only one who I can think of would be strong enough to actually hold that, and would probably have a backup key for this. He would also be more unlikely to use the blood of the people he killed to go ahead and create that kind of sigil on the back of the thing on the Rose Garden House. You know, I have a theory. Maybe if it skips up, but hear me out. Okay. I have a feeling that Kins is a re just a big red herring. And that the killer is actually a third party. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. So. It may be pointing to Kinzo being a murderer, but this is also Kinzo. He could have done it. But there's something else. So but there's something else that's bugging me. The epitaph. It said before. If I can flip back in my notes to it. First night. First twilight. Offer six chosen by the key. What key? Like I said, the key wouldn't have to be a physical key. It could even be fi figurative, or at least some sort of metaphor. Or it could just be a person, or anything like that. Which means, whoever is this key, or who whatever the key is, they already chose these six people. So, you think the key is uh, one of the people that died? I wouldn't say that. Mm. The six were chosen. The key is the only thing necessary to help unlock it. Mm -hmm. Alright. It also says on the second twilight, those who remain will tear apart the two clubs. Mm. I think in this situation, it wasn't Shannon and Cannon that I was thinking of originally. Now it could just be Ava and Hideyoshi. Alright, that's fair. Mm hmm. So, do you. Do, well, I, I, to, to bring this up a bit, you had said prior that you think Ava doesn't really give a shit about, you know, her family? I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't. Mm hmm. And if you'd also remember, the third twilight was there will remain who prays. Those who remain will praise Beatrice's name. Mm -hmm. And so, I doubt we'll go through all these twilights at once. I mean, Maria's the only one that praises Beatrice right now, at least. Exactly. Wait, because no, Kinzo later... too. And Kinzo, but that's only two out of the possible, Wait. what was it, eleven? Then again, that are left? Uh, the servants seem to oh. believe in her. Wait, did, do the servants believe in her, or do we have reason to disbelieve her? Um, they not much a belief in her as much as they fear her, and fear is far different from praise. Uh, well, it's it's weird. I I think Bond, you're asking like, do they believe in her or something like that? Yeah. Like, um, it's weird because like, there's the the conversation between Genji and Canon, where like Canon goes, "Hey, Genji, is Beatrice actually back?" And the answer is, "Oh, fuck no." <laughs> And Genji just tells him, I don't fucking know, and like, fucking, kind of just ends there, but like, like, the servants have been discussing, like, shit about Beatrice, and like, even, uh, Shannon, Anna, Genji, when they passed by the portrait, going to, what was it, lunch or dinner? It was lunch, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, lunch, they were, like, discussing it, and saying, like, hey, uh, uh Jessica, don't say shit, don't t bad talk, uh, Beatrice, or else fucking Kinto go ape. Which could itself just be one of those things because 
normally with little kids and with older kids, you don't want to get them thinking about any kind of spooky ghost story just so that way they'll freak out. Unless you're a troll, then in which case, go right for it and go be nuts. Well, I mean, like, I guess to a certain degree, when it, it seems like Maria's not necessarily, like, well, I guess we're talking about servants. The, the servants, mm -hmm. it seems like they're kind of scary, but then, hold on, I have to fucking, I have to double check something with Orange real quick. I'll put it in Fight Club. Okay. It also feels like Ava was supposed to be killed, but something stopped it. What makes it like that? Hmm. I'm Just a hunch? Sure. Just a hunch. My hunches are always all over the place. This does beg the question, why was Genji chosen first to die? Goda? I mean, Goda, sorry, Goda. It's fine, they, they, they both their names start with fucking do we, do we know if he was the first? No. One of the first. Oh, okay, you just mean, like, oh, in the group. Nope, nope, that will never get that sandwich. Oh, um, <laughs> I, I, I think I am clear to go on that, right, Orange? What? Huh? Clear to go what I asked, because they brought it up. Well, take a look at the people who were killed. Kraus, Rudolph, Curie, Rosa, Goda, and Shannon. We can go ahead and say that Shannon doesn't deserve this, but could have died because she saw Beatrice. Meaning, she saw something she wasn't supposed to see. Mm -hmm. Kraus is already a terrible person, and we've already seen that he's committed a lot of crimes just to go ahead and do what he does. Rosa was committing child abuse on Maria earlier. She was harming Beatrice's messenger. Mm-hmm. Rudolph is... Rudolph. And with that trial in America, it's obvious he's not exactly the best person. With Kyrie, it could be that she has something else going on underlying her, or some other kind of dark secret that we don't know about. Watch it, we were dealing with some deadly sins again. Pi possibly. Alright. Alright. Oh, right? That's all I had to say.